Okay, everybody. We're live now. Here we go. There you go, John. I knew you were waiting for that AOL noise. Old school. What's not all everybody in here is even going to know. <clears throat> First time with that intro. Well, I woke you up now, right? That dial up never gets too old, right? And so many people don't even know what that dial up is anymore. Those were the days. Those were the days. Okay. So, uh, obviously, we all know what we're covering today. So, we want to take a look at creating this, recreating these headphones that we've done inside of ZBrush. I made inside of ZBrush. And really, the goal of these type of streams for me is something that you all could definitely make easily after this stream, i.e., uh, you know, this is all recorded and it'll be up on our pages. So, you're going to be able to watch us at any time you want. And it's something that I think. Sometimes getting something simple will help you wrap your head around the the features that I'm going to cover and how I'm going to go. And it's also going to see a, a path or a workflow here um, where I, this is something I picked kind of because it is mostly hard surface, but then it's got some, sl some, some other items in here, right? So like this, this is... This is actually dynamics. So we're going to get in a little bit of dynamics to do this part as an example. So, right, we got a little combination of a couple things here. So this is just a practice thing for us all. I think it's good to make sometimes just some simple stuff. Uh, so as far as your question for a computer, uh, what type of computer? The best computer to be for purposes of ZBrush Okay, just since you're asking, I saw also somebody was asking that in the beginning. Um, oh, that's awesome, John. <laughs> Tell her hello. Um, is get the best processor you can afford. So speed with as many threads that you can afford. So the more threads you have and the higher speed, the better off you're going to be. And then the more RAM that you have, the better off you'll be. But also with that said... Also, there's speeds of RAM. So if you're getting, you're going to spend a little bit more money to get better speed RAM, that's going to be better for you, right? Like you could have a machine with 46 gigs of RAM, but if its speed's only like 2100, 1800, that's not necessarily going to be better than, say, in a machine that might only have 32 gigs of RAM, but then its speed's like 4200 or something. There's, there's just, there's variables. There's a lot of variables. So in essence, Think about your RAM with speed. Think about your processor with speed. The more threads, the better. Um, the higher speed, the best you can. And then also the one big one that everyone forgets to think about is hard drive. Okay? And that's this is not also just a ZBrush thing. Um, when you're running something, you want to have it, some hard drive space available. And this is for every application. Is because virtual memory goes on your hard drives. Right? So... Getting a hard drive that has enough space and then also the speed of that hard drive comes into play as well, right? So a 7,200 rotations per minute compared to a 52, 54 is very different. You know, now there's SSDs and everything else. Like So your three major factors to recap, processor, as much speed as you can, RAM, same thing, as much RAM you can get in speed, and then your hard drive. Don't forget it, but don't, like if you're going to get a system that in your, your main hard drive is only 250 gigs as an example that's not a lot you're gonna fill that up in like one day honestly or two days so make sure you're getting a hard drive as your base hard drive at least get something that's like a terabyte like they don't cost a lot now um and then that way there's virtual memory space there even windows themselves they say keep about 10 percent of your hard drive completely free and open and zbrush does not use a video card so that get whatever video card you want depending on what you do uh, there's only one item in ZBrush that uses a video card, and you don't need anything spectacular to use it. So there is no GPU. Okay, there you go. All right, so let's take a look at these headphones. We're going to be making these from beginning to end. So I'm going to show you some of the main steps that I did to get to this. All right, and then as we go along here, by all means, fire away questions. I'll be watching the chat as best I can as we're moving along here, and I've got my... My colleague here, Mr. Daisuke, is in here with us, so he'll be also be able to type up some stuff for you all, okay? So let's get that buckled up, and let's get going here, okay? 
so making this the main uh, usually when I'm especially when I'm doing something hard surface and I mean this is big I look at maybe what is possibly the biggest item on the piece the piece that is hard surface because the difference with hard surface work modeling and sculpting compared to organic you don't have any of that measuring tools that we use in organic i.e if I make any human I know humans are seven and a half heads high as an example so I can use a head as a measuring tool we know certain things about bone structure where certain bones should be you don't have that for hard surface it's there's no base okay here's where you got to go and for that matter uh, majority of the time when you're doing something hard surface you're always starting from scratch you're never really like I can't just load the human body here and make headphones that that's not going to do anything for me right so what I would recommend number one is when you're going to make something hard surface look around a little bit and look at what the item that is taking up the most volume for you and that's the item that you want to make sure you get that right because then that is setting your proportions up for down the line and then that can be your measuring stick that we would use in other things in organic like you know there's a lot of things on the human body right or you know, we have a, and there's an eye space between the two eyes. And in fact, you can fit five eyes across the head. And then if you flip that, you can actually go five heads and hit every bony landmark down a human body, right? This part of the bone of your face, which is a zygomatic or your cheek, that's the bone that pretty much sticks out the furthest from this angle profile view on a human skull. We don't have all this kind of stuff in hard surface. So pick something. So for me, it's going to be the main head piece, right? The ear piece, okay? Right, so welcome for the first time. Awesome, thanks for coming with us. So I'm gonna just grab what ships with ZBrush, which is just inside the tool palette. I'm just gonna grab our cylinder 3D, okay? And let me see how the color, I guess you guys are okay. The color looks good. Right now I have a certain material selected and I've got my little bit dark. So the material I so you know, I'm gonna show you the render I did here and I did it inside of ZBrush. I used uh, this metal material and then I went with a darker color, as you can see, okay? Um, but since we're streaming, okay, I'm just gonna not do do that yet because it's dark, right? So I wanna keep this kind of brighter for you all so you can really see what I'm doing, all right? So I'm going to grab this cylinder, all right? And then looking at the floor grid, I'm gonna turn that on for us. And in fact, let me up the floor grids so you guys can really see that in the stream, okay? So what I'm looking at is if I'm building the headphones and if I want symmetry, in essence, along the ax, right? When I'm, in essence, when I'm building something on the headphones over here, right? I want it happening on the other headphone part over here, which isn't really that important at this stage. So I'm only bringing this up because we got a green line, we got a red line, and then if, once I move this away, you can see there's also a blue line, right? So right now, this cylinder by default is aligned along the Y, right? So this is normally the floor grid that we would have on, okay? So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is come down here to my initialized state, and I have the options of what, what, ang what do I want to align along, what axis, right? So I'm going to say let's align this along the X so that way, when I'm looking straight at this, I am looking straight at the headphones, and then this is going to be the side of my headphones, All right? And then this is a little too much for me, okay? As far as what I mean by that, there's too much topology here. So I'm going to use this initialized state again, and the V divide here, okay, which I'll throw on my magnifier, okay? The V divide, I'm going to knock that all the way down, okay? And then we want to knock this down to a certain number like 12 10 right you want this to have a certain number to it right i want a little bit lower polygon count to this okay i don't want it to be really high all right so let's say uh, maybe a little too much let's say we can go i'm gonna go i think nine so we'll go three by three by three I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live in this world. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just adjusting what I want as my geometry span. So now i got a cylinder that looks like this. Hello, 249L504. I feel like I'm uh, Captain's Law. Starting 249L5040. Welcome to the stream. 
So <clears throat> the other thing now I want to adjust is the size. This is way too big to be something that's going to go on someone's ears, your character's ear, right? So I'm going to then come over here, and we've got, sli we've got sliders here that you can adjust the size, right? So I probably want to live more in, I'd say right about there. That looks good to me. Uh, let's say right about that. There you go. Okay, and so now this is what's going to become my base right for the headphones now so i'm going to say okay i like this this is good to go so now i'm going to make this a poly mesh okay and then now i hit make poly mesh and now we've got this as our mesh All right, and for now i'm going to turn off the floor grid okay because i don't really need that right now all right and then where do i want this to live i'm gonna i'm just gonna stay in this world right now in the middle of the world Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to see what this looks like when we divide up. All right, so I'm going to not divide up, actually. When I'm doing something like this, especially if I'm going to stay low polygon at this stage, I'm going to use dynamic subdivs. So that way I have a f beautiful flat pancake. Yes, I've made a pancake, people. There you go. So this is turning on dynamic, which is over here in my geometry, right here, okay? but I'm hitting the key to turn it on and off. I, I, I never touch that button. I always use the hotkeys, which in this case, the D for dynamite is turning on dynamic and then shift D is turning it off. Again, that's D actually here. I forgot to launch. Hold on, let me launch my little helper for you guys. Hold on. Let's see, I forgot to launch the other little app that we use during this stream. I forgot to launch this for you guys. Okay, there we go. Now you should be able to see what I'm actually clicking on to. Here we go. There you go. There, so bottom, screen bottom left, you can see the uh, what keys I'm holding on my keyboard as well now. I love it. It's, hey, I'm here to entertain John as much as I can. Hello, John's daughter. How are you? Thanks for watching. Okay, I do watch Star Trek from time to time. I rewatch the, the the newer movies, you know, the reboot that J.J. Abrams did. He, he knocked it out of the park, in all honesty. All right, so because it's a flat pancake, which makes no sense for this right now, I am going to, me, I live in the world of creasing, okay? So I'm below dynamics. I'm going to go down to the creasing menu. I'm going to hold the shift key so I can open up that crease menu and still have my dynamic subdivs open, all right? So that's important. Again, shift key, when you do this, will keep this open. If you don't have the shift key clicked on, you can see it closes the dynamic subdiv and only opens up the crease group, right? And I wanna keep both of them open because I'm gonna use something in here. Number one, I'm just gonna tap on crease. So we get a nice, beautiful, beautiful cylinder. It's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to turn off polyframe so we can see it. So it's still very faceted right here. So it's going to control that. Here are my subdivision levels within dynamic. So I'm going to up this. I live, my defaults that I like to have, okay, is this set to four. Okay, and then because I've creased edges now, I'm going to come down here in this crease level slider. I'm going to drop this down to two. And what that did is soften up my edges now, okay? Because now I am telling ZBrush, hey, you're dividing four times dynamically, right? But I only want to hold that creasing for two of those four. So it divides twice where no edges are allowed to move that are creased. And then subdivision level three and subdivision four, boom, it softens this. And that's, that's what I want, okay? So this is where I want to, I want to work with this. This is what I want to work with, okay? So here we go. Oh, Heroes Bench Collectibles. Love the name, first of all. Let's just pause for the name for a second here. And number two, the simplest thing sometimes, right? Just goes a long ways for us as artists. Yeah, that shift thing, I use that all the time, man. All the time. Okay. <clears throat> Huffy, glad, glad to help. Glad wherever I, that's what we're doing these for too. Is anywhere you guys need help, that's what we're talking about. All right, so now I'm gonna stick with low polygon modeling here. So I'm gonna switch to my Z modeler brush, which is B, Z, 
right? And then M, what you're seeing again, bottom screen left, okay? So this, I wanna put an edge here because I need to start making something. So in fact, let's do one thing here. Let's take a just a screenshot of this so we remember what we're making and it kind of, I'm gonna use this as my own reference for this stream for you guys, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm selecting the finished headphones here and I'm gonna go to the document and I'm gonna click this back color and drag it to black. So I want pure black as my background, all right? And good, this is all I want. And then I'm gonna hit texture and then I'm gonna do grab dock here. I'm gonna grab that and what it did is made a texture of my document, okay? And then now I wanna add this to my world here, my scene, right? I want this to just be floating around. So I'm gonna go for texture. I've got this selected and I'm just gonna click this add to spotlight button. And now what we have here is actually an image of this, okay? So now if we go back to what we've been working on, you can see this is here. So let's go back now to making our document a little bit brighter just for the purpose of the stream for us. And you can see now I have a floating image of my headphones. And the reason people, I want pure black again as my background, I know when I throw that in spotlight, 100% black in ZBrush is seen as transparent. So in essence, I'm masking out the background just by changing it to black. That gives me the power to just have these headphones now. We can move them over here, all right? And then I've even got an opacity control here. Right, so I definitely want those to be at 100% opacity. And then now I just hit the Z key for ZBrush. And see, now I've, we've got a little reference here, right? So, and then again, I can move this reference wherever I want, right? We can move it down to the bottom here, just so it looks cooler in the stream, okay? So there you go. So now I have something that I can look at always and refer back to in my case for this stream, okay? The next thing I wanna do is because I'm using Spotlight right now, this feature allows me to project the uh, details to a model or paint to a model. That's actually not what I wanna do. I want to use it as a referencing, almost like if anybody's taken photography, like a light box, right? That's in photography, right? Old school, back in the day when I used to be in the dark room and you made little slides, you made, you looked at your negatives. I digress, okay? Well, Alfred, thanks for coming. I'm glad you've been learning a lot. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go to the brush palette now. And in samples, I'm in essence going to turn off Spotlight's feature of being able to use an image to project onto a model. Okay, so I'm going to turn this button off because I want to tell ZBrush, hey, look, I'm just going to use Spotlight, okay, as just a referencer, okay? Okay so there you go so now let's get back to this and we're looking at this again and again i'm going to go to the red side because that's the positive side of my world where that red line is and let's start building this portion right here now okay let's start building out this headphone part okay so we're gonna i'm gonna turn on my polyframe again i've got z modeler selected right i'm going to do a shift d to turn off dynamic okay yeah, an image with pure black will work the same. Yes, 100%. And then pure black, if you're using it as an alpha, is 100% mask. See, in a texture, it's going to be used as transparency. As a mask, it's going to be used as 100% masking, just FYI. Okay, so I'm going to grab, I'm just going to, by default, I'm going to insert an edge loop. Okay, there we go. I've got an edge loop there, right? Uh, I want now these faces right here that I'm painting white to come off now the headphones, right? So again, how I'm doing this is I'm holding the Alt key with Z Modeler, and then I'm just clicking while my finger's still on Alt, you can see bottom screen left, and now I'm just painting those. And those are the faces I want, and then now I just pull out, right? And then tapping the Alt key now while my pen is still on my Cintiq will change the polygroup color, which I would highly recommend. All right, so I'm gonna say, okay, that looks good there. Let's go about, let's go that high right now, right? And then what I wanna do 
is these faces here. Let's let's taper them in. So I'm going to come out of perspective as well so you guys can really see what I'm doing here. Okay? Turn on off the menu for Z Modeler. It's the space bar. So you don't get the menu unless you hold space bar. When you let go of space bar, it'll automatically close the menu. Okay? So I'm looking at this, and what I'm going to do is hold down control, drag a box over, and I'm going to let go of control. Right? So look at my... Look up here! There you go. There's the first one, people. Look at me! Look at me! Right? Look at the camera. I'm not holding the keyboard, but I still have the masking brush engaged because my pen never came off my Cintiq. I'm going to hold the Alt key now, and I get a white box. This is awesome, people, and this is important. This is actually a feature that now that it was in a white box, right, um, everything that was in that box stays unmasked, and everything else gets masked, okay? And then now I switch back to my gizmo. I'm going to click my little map quest, right, icon. That'll center the gizmo to the unmasked vertex points. So now I can add a little taper and change the size of this headphone a little bit. I want a little bit about that. And now that I'm looking at this, I think this is too tall. It needs to be a little bit smaller. Okay. And I'm going to now put a little taper. Also, I don't want this to sit like that. I want to put a little bit of taper here as well. Okay. So then I'm going to hover over an edge. And again, we have Z Modeler selected. Space bar it. And then I'm going to switch to slide. Guys, I use this so much. Okay. And then go edge loop complete. Right. So that way when I click on one edge, all those, I just want to put a little bit of taper. Like puts, let's put some design there. Eh? That's right. I'm Canadian. Don't you forget it. Right. And then now let's hit the D key for dynamite. And look what we've made. A wonderful button. Wee! I've made a button. Okay. There you go. I don't, I don't, I don't drink caffeine, believe it or not, heroes. I don't, Heroes Bench Collective. No caffeine for me. I'm high on life, baby. That's how I'm going. All right, so this is clearly not what I want, right? This is some kind of little button-looking thing. So I'm going to hover over this edge here now. Space bar it. Go to crease. Complete edge loop. Let's crease those, and let's also crease those. That is more what I'm looking for, right, in the type this, what I'm making right now. And now that I'm seeing this a little bit more harsh again, I would say the gap here, I need a little bit more. So let's do a little bit. I went a little too aggressive. Let's go right about there. And I think I'm a little too aggressive here too. I'm going to go a little bit. Yeah, there. I'm going to go something more like that. That looks good to me. Okay. Oh, you're from uh, Ontario. That's where I grew up. Southwest Ontario. Okay. I grew up in Fort Erie, St. Catharines, Niagara Falls, Welland area. Another Canadian with us. Yes. Uh, Hanny, you're too kind. Thank you. Um, the question, uh, I see Dice K, is that what you're looking for? So Dice K was bringing up, you were asking, I'm assuming to just have a visual to what, what Dice K is uh, responding to you with. This menu is what I'm assuming you're talking about. If you do want to turn that off, like Dice K has mentioned to you guys, okay, you can do that in preferences. Okay, so then you go interface, okay, and then you want to be able to turn off um, the IMM selector viewer. So that's this right here, and then you just boom, and then it's off. And by the way, you can move it to different parts of the UI, so maybe you'd prefer it on the left or the right. Oh, John, you're in Buffalo? I grew up in Buffalo, too. I went to Lewiston Porter High School. <laughs> God, the world's starting to collide, everybody. Hello from Orlando, right? So this is, I think, what you're looking for. So there's your on and off. I'm going to keep it on because I like it on. Okay, so back to Z Modeler. All right, so now we've got this. Let's start making now this part up here, this little ridge part. So let's, again, I'm going to come out of dynamic, and I do this because I want to see the low polygon cage so that when I switch to an insert edge... Okay, I want this to have just a little bit of a lip right there. And then I need another edge here. Okay, and let's create that. Okay, and then now I'm going to take these faces. And again, I'm holding the Alt key to do this, right? And then now I'm just going to pull up here. And this is where polygrouping is so important, people. 
I'm going to tap the Alt key while I'm still doing this action, right? And every time I tap, I get different polygroups. So my goal here is to get very visually different polygroups than what I already have adjacent, right? So I can visually see the difference here. All right. What's going on, Ronnie? Hello from Barcelona, Pedro. Thanks for coming. Right? So there we go. Right? <clears throat> and again, if you're looking at the design here, right? Once again here, we'll, we'll si let me size this up. Let me make this even bigger so you guys can really have a visual of what we're making here. Okay? Let's, my ADD will kick in if I don't put those cords underneath my banner. All right? So this part right here is what I'm making right now. Right? So then I need some tapering. So I'm just going to taper this way instead. Okay? Center that and let's put a little taper there. I definitely want creasing here. Right? So once again, space bar. Boom, boom. And I want creasing there. Okay? And so now when I turn on dynamic subdiv, this is what we're going to start to get. Right? Something like this. Okay? So now we're talking. Now we're starting to get similar things and then the beauty of this because we're low polygon i can constantly keep adjusting say you know let's go a little bit bigger let's bring that down a little bit more now see i'm constantly able to adjust things at a low low polygon even this i can say let's slide this again and make that a little bit smaller okay again the d key puts me in dynamic subdiv Shift D takes me out, D takes me in, and you can see in the UI right here, this turning on and off. Okay, good to go. Okay, so now, okay, I need a little bit of a cavity, so I'm going to take those faces, and let's just push them in, and I'm going to definitely change the polygrouping. I don't want to go down this way all the way to the bottom, so I'm going to go right about there. Okay, and there you go. Now we've got the whole beginning side part right? That I'm looking to have here. All right. So let's get now into some of the detailing of this. Let's start putting this part in. Okay. This is quite easy. So number one, I'm going to start naming things. Main ear piece. Okay. And I'm going to start making folders because for rendering wise, I want to have certain things be certain materials as well okay and i want to take advantage of being able to folder things up and do certain things as we go on here in this stream okay so i got the main ear piece i'm going to duplicate this that's all i'm doing is duplicating it making sure it's in the folder right and then now i'm going to rename this one i'm going to call this one let's call this one sub okay and I'm going to now look at just this one right here, right? <clears throat> and I'm going to turn off the top sub tool here. So now the duplicated one's the only one I have on right now. Okay. And I'm going to say, all right, let's hold down control shift tap right here. So I get both polygroups and actually the only polygroup I want to keep is this middle polygroup here. So I'm going to turn on at the bottom here, display properties, double just for your, you all can see what piece I'm actually looking at right so if we flip it you can see the geometry that i'm actually taking out of here okay and so now i'm going to go to my geometry menu and again the shift key works for this as well i forget who it was that i think it was hero right the shift key with the groups you can also do the same thing with subtool i mean subtools sub uh sub palettes if you hold the shift key you can see my subtool palette did not close because i held the shift key all right, and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here. And I'm going to go to modify topology. I'm sorry, not modify topology. And then I'm going to do a delete hidden. And what I've done is I've deleted all of their geometry. Perfect. And now I'm going to say with Z model, I haven't switched brushes, br brushes, brushes yet. Okay. I haven't switched it yet. So I'm going to hold down the alt key again. I'm going to paint three of them, but this time I'm going to let go of the alt key. And it's going to change those three to a, a polygroup. Okay. And then again, I'm going to hold the alt key, paint white. And when I let go of the alt key, if I don't take my pen off, okay, I can tap the alt key again and keep changing that polygroup. So this is a built-in feature of Zmodeler to allow me to change polygrouping on the fly. 
Okay, and that's what I want. I want these three faces to be green, these, and this is why everybody, I took the time to drop this at the very beginning why I chose nine. Okay, because I knew, and I think my best thing that I can say for hard surface, it's like playing chess, right? For those that have played chess, you don't make a move to just to do a move. You're making a move that's going to be cause and effect for my moves down the line, fifth move or sixth or 10th move down the line. I see hard surface a lot like this. So what I mean by that is when I made that original cylinder, I made it nine spans for this part of the model. This is the main reason why I made it nine spans because I knew I wanted a three by three by three polygroup. Okay. So yes, chess, John, like rooks, knights. Yes. In case my Burbage isn't coming out right. And Montreal, I love Montreal. I love me some Montreal. It's one of my all-time favorite cities that I've ever visited in my life so far. I love Montreal. It's good times. All right, so I'm going to hold over space bar now. And this time, the Q-Mesh, all right, I'm going to switch it to inset instead. Okay, and then I'm going to say polygroup all is what I'm going to do. Okay, and then now I'm going to do an inset on this. Let's say right about there. That looks good. And now I can just tap on that polygroup and tap on that polygroup, right? This is what I want to do. I want to tap right on the polygroups so that I can do the same action to all other polygroups. Does that make sense? Right? So what you're this is why we're doing the time here to take these and make these all different polygroups. This is important. Taking these these three faces each, right? And then now when I inset I can now just tap and can do the same exact insets on all three of those, then essence that polygroup going. Okay. Montreal did have a great season. Those Canadians, Montreal Canadians. That was awesome to see a Canadian team in the finals. I wish they would have won it though. Okay. So <clears throat> I don't want now the green polygroup, right? So I'm going to hold down control shift and tap on the green, right? And then you can see the green. Control shift, click and drag, and now all I have left are these faces here. Perfect. That's this is what I want. So now I'm gonna go to geometry again. I'm gonna do a delete hidden. So I get rid of any, every other face. Okay, <clears throat> and now I'm gonna hover over any face, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna hold down the space bar. Let's go I'm gonna go back to Q mesh. Okay, and this time I'm gonna do all polygons. That way, when I click on one, they all get a nice thickness. And again, tapping the Alt key will keep changing your polygrouping. People, this is so important for this purpose alone. If I now want to come inside here, right, or outside, you can see there's different polygroups to play with. So if I want to do this again, right, and see all polygons, it's doing it to all of them. But if I now switch to polygroup all, I know now when I click here, only the pink faces, right, as you can see, we'll get the Q mesh happening to them. So as an example, I might want to take the time to now even make the inner ones that we already changed to be the same polygroup, right? So now they all have purple, right? And then now you guys can click on this and do this or just hold the shift key. And now you're making just a move. You're not doing a Q mesh, okay? And there's a massive difference between Q-Mesh and extruding. Very big difference. Q-Mesh is like what makes Z-Modeler, in my opinion, awesome. And its ability to do things is incredible. So really quickly, since you're asking, okay? So if I'm in Q-Mesh, when I pull on a face, you think that's an extrude. And I get why you would call that an extrude, okay? But it's not. Because what Q-Mesh is going to be able to do for you is when I go now pull a face next to it, we automatically weld everything for you so this is all welded here now there's no there's not two faces sitting in the middle right so when you go to smooth this you see it's all connected this is very different and then if i want to delete i can actually click on this face again and look on this and look i can delete them as well if i switch to extrude and do that same action i do an extrude and then i do an extrude you see there's no welding there and then when we smooth it looks like that that is very different. And I can't now delete. It's just extruding, right? Where QMesh, I can add and delete. And there, boom, they're gone. That is the difference, okay? 
All right, so let's turn on our other piece. And what is the point of this? This, okay, is going to be this part of my speakers. Okay, and my headphones design here. So I'm going to hit the D key, right, for dynamic subdiv again. So now it's on. And I'm going to crease now. Let's get those crease. So now they look a little bit better. So I'm just clicking crease with an angle. It's already set to 45 degrees. Perfect. Love it. And for the sake of just us having a visual, okay, let's go ahead and select the gold material that I even used on this model. And let's go fill this one sub tool that we're playing with right now, this second one, with the gold so you can visually see what's going to happen here. So I'm going to say material only. So I'm going to hit the M key up here. So look at the top, look at the top. And then color, fill object. And then now you can see in the sub tool, it even updates. It's gold. So now if we go back to this, right? And now I want to put a little bit more darker. Not hot pink, unless you want hot pink headphones. Right there. So something now a little bit better like that. Okay. So now what we have here is a sub tool that has, you know, different material and color applied to this gold one. And now all I'm going to do is tell ZBrush, okay, let's turn on live booleans up here at the top. So look up here. Okay. And then now come over here and make this a subtractive. And then now this is what we have. Now we're cutting in to the shape, right? So I don't, I need more being cut into here, right? So I need these faces here to move more. So I'm throwing some transparency, right? And then in this case, I want again, QMesh Polygroup All, why it's so important. And I'm gonna move all these in a lot more. I'm gonna go more like that, okay? So we turn transparency off. There, that's making a nicer, deeper cavity for us. Okay, perfect. There we go, we got that part. We're off and running here, people. Okay, well, I don't know if we're running, but we're moving along here. Okay, so let's now continue and let's start making the internal parts here, okay? So <clears throat> this is where example where I'm saying the group, the, these folders are gonna become important to us and when we start getting into start groups, okay? So now I'm going to say, all right, let's just, let's just get another cylinder. Let's get another cylinder. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, let's just append. I'm just going to even just grab the cylinder here. And it's the same cylinder that we've started with. And I'm going to call this, uh, again, we need to rename this. It might help if I click on rename, uh, main inner ring. You guys, whatever, if you, why don't you guys go to repeat this? If you want to remake this, call this whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. Bryant, if you're using QMesh and you go inward, it's because you're flipped, you flipped the normal, the normal you were looking at. And now you've told QMesh, no, push this face in, but you got to remember QMesh has to create a solid mesh too. So in order to do that, we got to push the face in. And then all these other faces. So what he's bringing up, people, this is, let's, let's talk about it briefly here. Okay, is this. Let's just, don't worry about what I'm doing right now. Just, let's just answer this question. I think it's important. Okay, so, no, 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 what am I, I don't want this cube. What am I doing? Let's just make my life easy and do this. In fact, make it even easier. Why am I even doing that? Let's just do this. Okay. So what he's talking about is this, okay? When you guys go to QMesh this, you get that, right? So what I did is I pushed the face inward instead of outward, right? And QMesh, okay, is about creating a solid surface. So this is a solid surface, but in order to do that, the normal of the face needs to flip, right? To make the solid face. So to fix this is an easy fix. If you're ever going to do this, and you're not gonna do that. See the difference, okay? Didn't just come down here to do your splayed properties, which someone has already said I've seen, and clicked flip. And then there you go. Okay? There you have it. Problem solved. Okay, back to our back to this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now and let's go. All right. Let's add this to the folder. And now this is key. I'm gonna make a new start group. Okay, so I'm gonna click that little arrow right here, and I'm gonna make this a start group. 
So now I have a start group with two objects and I have a start group with one object all sitting within one folder. Okay, these are beneficial. So I can even turn off both those sub tools at the same time by turning the eyeball for the start group off. So guys, this is kind of like a subfolder in a little way, but it's not. We don't have, you don't have nesting folders. Okay. So there you go. Sorry, side effects. My apologies. Yes, you are not somebody. You're side effects. So let's go ahead and again, I'm gonna go say, let's crease this. Definitely want this creased, I already know that. Let's turn on dynamic. So we get a nice rounded piece that looks like this. I'm gonna turn that and then let's go ahead and make that be four, okay? Now, let's go ahead and move this to where we want it right here. And now I'm gonna size it down. And this is what I want sitting inside the headpiece. Now, as I was making this design, I went, you know what? Instead of just doing a cylinder like this is flat, let's let's have a little bit more fun with this, right? So how about let's go back to our gizmo, okay? And let's just solo out so we're only looking at this right now, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click this, this gear, okay, which is our options, which this is where we can find deformers and shapes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this cylinder instead, right? And now I get this. Okay, I got this cylinder, okay? And now I'm gonna turn off solo. And you see it's facing the wrong direction. What is controlling this, people, so you're aware of this, is that blue arrow. So if you notice, the blue arrow was facing this, that direct, this particular direction this way. And when we made the new cylinder, see the cylinder's facing that way. So, okay? Yes, my goal is to finish this in the stream. So if I hold down the Alt key and then do this and hold the Shift key, I can snap the gizmo to five degree angles so that I can put the blue arrow, blue arrow, the blue arrow facing that direction, click the gear and now click cylinder and then this is what I want. And now my next thing that I want is I wanna take advantage of the cones I actually want an opening in the center and then I'm going to have no spans along the green. So see, this has got the green cone gives me more geometry this way and the red cones give me more geometry this way. Okay. And then the white cone is no opening in the middle, opening in the middle. Okay. What's going on, Leo? And then now I'm going to go ahead again. Once again, I'm going to crease that. Yes. That's what I want. Right. I'm going to size this down now, right? So I want it to be maybe, we'll go about that thick. And then now let's size this up right about there. And let's put this now in its position down here and go a little bit smaller. Okay. And then now this for me is just way too wide. Okay. So I'm going to take advantage again of QMesh. Again, I have the Z model brush. I'm going to space bar this. And this time I'm going to QMesh poly loop it. Okay. I, I am Dirty Monk. I like the name. Good job. And then I'm going to pull here, right? This is Q-meshing. But if I hold the shift key, I switch to move. And then I'm going to do something like more around that range. So we get a little bit more something like that. And I'm going to add a little more element of design to this. Space bar, bevel. Let's go ahead and... Okay, and again, I'm going to solo this out so you guys can see it. And I'm going to turn off dynamic subdiv. Okay? And then I'm going to do a little bit of a bevel there and then I'm going to tap there and make it also there and there. Okay. And then now I'm going to hit the old crease Paul Gabriel over here. Bam. Which really is not crease Paul Gabriel, but darn it. I'm always going to say it and always going to do it. Okay. Which is really standing for poly groups and then hit the D key. And then now when I take solo out, see that's just there's a little more design element there. Right. And then especially for when we go and start doing something like, <laughs> rendering all right now this piece needs to be the same color and material as this piece so let's right now go pick a material and i told you guys i use this material right this is the material i use is this too dark for us you guys this is your feedback because you guys are watching a stream is it a little too dark i need to know this we can lighten it up is i let's go lighter i'm looking at the stream let's go lighter okay so what i'm going to do 
is I'm going to say, okay, this material now with white paint, let's now, the parts I'm making are all going to be living in the same. Okay. So John Y, yes, it's the crease PG. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, Gabriel from Toronto, another Canadian. We're bringing the Canadians today. I like it. So I'm going to go up here to MRGB, and I'm going to just going to say color fill object, right? Because I want this to take on that, and then now this ring is now going to take on color fill object, okay? And then now, let's start having a little bit more fun here, okay? I'm going to now, I'm going to insert... Let's insert a cube, okay? So now we've got this cube. I'm gonna click it and add it to the folder so it's in the folder, making sure it's there, okay? And let me rename this. I'm gonna name this repeat inner parts. And now I'm not gonna use this cube. I never use this cube with the pole. So once again, I'm gonna gizmo that, hit the gear. <clears throat> And I'm going to grab this cube, which is six faces. Okay, that's what I want. I want a cube with six faces like this. Okay, so in fact, let's just solo it out so you guys can see. And then this is going to be the same. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill this also again object. So that way, these three subtools now have the same materials. All right, I'm going to size this down a lot smaller. So I'm going to hit the W key to make this be a little bit smaller. Okay. And now what I want for this is I want this to live out here. Okay. So I'm just moving it out to be right about there. All right. And now I want this to repeat eight times. Okay. MRGB fills the selected material and the selected color on the selected subtool. Okay. RGB is only filling whatever color is selected to the to the subtool. That's it. And then M is only doing a material. Okay. So here we go. I'm gonna now go use handy dandy, and I'm a big fan of this now. Array mesh. I use array mesh all the time, especially for hard surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my array mesh on. I'm gonna turn on these three buttons as well because I know I'm gonna use them. So I'm just gonna turn them on. Okay. And then I said I wanted eight of them. So I'm going to go to my repeat. I'm going to say eight. So now I got eight of them. It looks like nothing is happening. There's eight cubes being repeated right now. So the next thing I want to do is tell ZBrush, okay, where do I want these eight pieces to live? So I'm going to turn on the floor grid again, just so we can see axis points again, right? So again, red is X. Blue is Z, right? And then the, there's a Y in there, which is the green. So looking at the red, that's my X. I am now going to tell in the rotation part of my array, I'm going to come here to my X amount and let's call 360 degrees of rotation. And you'll now see it's making like, you know, a shape for us because there's actually eight of these cubes. Okay. And now... I'm going to go back to my gizmo and now just move these away from the center of the world. And there we go. Yes. This is why I love myself some array mesh. Okay. And then now the beauty of array mesh. Hello, Daniel, another Montreal native. Excellent. <clears throat> Thanks. I'm glad uh, you're enjoying the hard surface stuff. Spotlight, yeah, you can use, uh, not M. There's no material in Spotlight. It's only color, okay? All right, so now I want to make a little bit better of a shape here, okay? So let's go back to my Z Modeler brush. I'm going to hover over face and Q mesh only a single polygon. And now when I pull this out, I can see, and again, you see I'm changing polygroups. I can see what's happening everywhere else, Okay. And because it's an instancing system, there's really only one piece that I'm working on. And then I'm going to pull this up so it does more of a ramp up like this. Let's go ahead and turn on dynamic and see what we got. OK, 
Okay, I definitely want to go back to the creasing again. Let's crease some of that up. So we get a little bit of a softer. And let's definitely knock down our crease level. And we'll see, get something a little bit more like that. Right? I want a little bit of a, a ramp going up. And in fact, I'm going to change even the size of this. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and let's have some more fun. So I'm going to solo this out. And let's take these and let's even push it further this way and let's change this one vertex point and make it like that. So we've got a nice little bit of a kind of ramp piece doing that. There we go. Nice, right? That was so satisfying. Nice, Daniel. I like it. I like it. We're doing stuff here. Yes. All right. Now I want to come down back into our sub tools. Okay. So this ring's pretty cool. All right, and what I wanted to do was make another one, okay? So let's just take the one that already exists and let's duplicate that, okay? And I'm gonna make, now rename this and I'm gonna call this one small inner ring. Okay, there we go. And now gizmo that, pull that up in here. This is centered, right? So you can click the bing, map quest to center it. And now let's just size this down. So it'll fit with what I want this to look like. Maybe a little bit mm, right around in there. Okay, and then now I want to also now add a bevel here. Okay, so once again, I'm going to turn on this so you guys can see it. Here, we'll solo it out. So I got bevel, and I want to make a bigger bevel kind of right there. Let's do another one there as well, and then there. Okay, I already have one. And once again... Crease PG, right? Because it's making a new and then turn back my dynamic. And then now that is more the ring that I'm looking for in there, right? And let's make it a little bit lower. Let's go. Let's live more right in there. Okay. So now we're starting to build out those internal parts, right? That are coming together for us. Okay. So <clears throat> now that I have that, all right, let's continue this. Let's make another another shape here, okay? Let's do another shape in, in the middle here. So I'm gonna, let's go ahead and, I'm just trying to think which one I wanna do right now. Uh, let's go ahead and let's, let's copy this, let's duplicate this. And I'm gonna call this small uh, cylinder. All right, and I'm gonna hit my gizmo again. And guys, you can see how much I really use this. And now I'm going to replace what I just duplicated with this cylinder now. And then this cylinder, I'm going to close up. Okay. And then this, let's make it a, a lot bigger. Let's go right about, let's go that size. And then let's go about that tall. All right. And then all I'm using is the gizmo. Let's go ahead now and look at this, at this point. Right. And again... Excuse me. I have Z modeler. Okay. And then now I'm going to click this. Right. So once again, I'm making a bevel here is all I'm doing. Right. I'm just beveling this edge. Okay. That looks good. We're going to do the old crease PG again, crease by polygroups. So the way that edge and that edge automatically is getting creased. I'll go ahead and uh, this isn't necessary. You'll never see it, but it's my ADD kicking in. Okay, there we go. Now we're talking. Okay, this is coming together nicely. And let's insert an edge loop here now. Let's go, let's go right about there. Okay, now I want these to be a new polygroup, right? So obviously people, we can do this. You guys now know, right? You can do this. Here's something else that sometimes I will do people that will give me this, the polygroup and the edge loop, right? All at the same time for me. If you guys use an inset instead, and like I use flat island, when I do the inset, see, I'm already getting some new polygroups right here as well. So sometimes I'll use this just to change that polygroup up top, right? And then you can shrink it, and then there, there's a new polygroup, right? Yes, I do, heroes. I do. Um, so here, okay. I can slide now, and I want to bring this all the way in, maybe something more like that. 
I definitely want this creased. And then now I'm going to Q mesh polygroup all. Pull this out. Make that be a new polygroup. Let's go about that big. I'm going to go ahead and insert another edge loop here. Let's go ahead and also... We'll, we'll wait for the beveling, I guess. I'm going to select that polygroup. Shrink it. New polygroup. I got Q mesh selected polygrouping. Something like this. Change that polygroup. And then now, bevel. And I'm going a little bit faster because I'm just doing repeat actions that I've already shown you guys. And then there you go. So now this is going to be that inner piece that I want inside there. And let's make this be gold. Okay. So let's go ahead and assign this to be the gold like that. I think that'll look pretty cool. So color fill object. Okay, and I got MRGB, and then there you go. So I want that piece to be a gold piece for sure. Okay, and by the way, if you guys don't remember what materials you've ever selected or what color you've selected on certain sub tools, okay, here's a good one. Lisa needs braces and a little bit of even... Look up here! Look up here! Okay, if you guys click here and drag, you can see it says pick. You can actually pick the material that's been assigned to your subtools and find out which sub what one has. So there, I want to go back to that. And then the same thing for color. If you click, you can see it's it's all white. But see, I can grab any color even from the UI. So that's really important. Okay. How did I shrink it so fast? Shrink what? What part so fast? Oh, I think you're talking about when I selected. I did, oh, people, people, people. This is this is a must know, okay? This is definitely going to be a slight tangent, everybody. We're going to veer off a little bit in tangent fill, okay? okay this is a must know, everybody. I, 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 there's not a time I don't use this. Okay, so what I was doing is I was showing a portion, right? Let's just use this cylinder, okay? And then I was doing this. I could grow it out and shrink it out. That's all I was doing, okay? And what I'm doing is using my shortcuts. Look at the keyboard keys, okay? Control-Shift-X expands, grows. Control-Shift-Tapping-S shrinks, okay? And now we even have something way cooler where if I, like, I duplicated a bunch of these, Okay, and let's do this, let's do this, all right, let's do this, okay? And let's go ahead and assign different polygroups to all of them. And now let's make these three have the same polygroup. Okay, uh, well, let's make them very, there we go, different. You guys now have the ability, like even if you did this, where I've only got one of these green cylinders, right? I can tell it to give me all three because all three of these have the same polygroup. Look at that. Like I'm not I don't even have any of the geometry selected of the other two cylinders, but we have now got a new feature that ZBrush knows that those two other cylinders are the same polygroup. Okay? And then bam. And I'm doing control shift Q, which everything lives in this visib visibility palette people. So I just did this, grow to polygroups. Then I use grow all, and then here's your grow and your shrink, okay? There you go, okay? That's a must know, in my opinion, people. All right, back to our headphones. Okay, looks good. Loving it. Let's go ahead and add another um, cylinder. Okay, and now because I want to stay organized, I'm going to move this above the gold, and I want to make that gold its own start group, okay? And now let's go ahead... And let's just copy this. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this and add it to the folder. So now I've got start group two, start group three, and start group two. And here's the nice thing about start groups, people. If I want to turn these three subtools off, all I have to do is click the eyeball for the start group and bam, they're off. Turn them all back on, bam, they're all back on. So this is why I like to use start groups, okay, with this. All right, so now I'm just, I'm just going to, again, same thing. I'm going to grab a cylinder. Okay, I'm going to just resize this to be about this big. Bring this down just so I have a surface there, something like that. Let's go ahead and crease this as well. 
So I got something a little bit more like that. This needs to be sit more in this world. There. Because I want something like that. Okay. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. All right. And you can see this work full of people as we go along here. Now, this. Okay. Again, you want to make sure. If I'm making sure I want this to be the same color, possibly, of what I've been making. Right. So this piece, I want to move up into this folder. I want it to live in here. Okay. And then I'll call this main cylinder. All right, and then now let's go ahead and let's duplicate this. I'm going to rename this a sphere sub. I know it's not a sphere. It's okay. It's all right. Oops. Rename sphere. A keyboard is underneath my Cintiq, so it's hard to get at. All right, and let's go ahead and replace this with a polysphere. Yes. And let's make that sphere a lot smaller. And once again, I'm going to go down to a ray mesh. Okay. And then I'm going to turn on a ray mesh. I'm going to lock the positions. I'm going to turn on these three buttons because I'm going to be using these. And I'm going to say, let's do five. And again, I'm rotating. Let me make sure my head's not covering what I'm doing. Okay, there. And I'm going to rotate 360 degrees. And then now pull out the spheres to give me that. Okay. And now this, I'm going to turn this into a subtractive. So it's cutting through the surface. And I don't want it to cut completely through. I just want to create some kind of little spherical dip in there. Something like that. Yes. That's what I'm looking for. Yes. All right. We're moving right along here, okay? Now let's make sure that's got this material. I want that to have this material as well, okay? And I'm actually, I'm happy with this, so let me show you guys how to apply this, okay? So I can come down here where it says Make Mesh. Just click that button, and now the they're actually all there. There's no instance anymore. See, they're all actually sphere shapes now, okay? Hello from India. Nice to have you here. Beats by Paul, Heroes Bench Collectibles. I love it. Um, remind me, Heroes, if you're here for the whole stream, remind me at the end. I'll share my uh, Discord that you're asking for. Okay? So, okay, so just because oil change is bringing it up, that lock position, what it's doing is array mesh is using the bounding box of the mesh. Okay? If, so here, let's do it on this since this is still an array mesh. If I turn this off, lock position, lock size, this stuff's important to us, right? So you can see how things change with them off, right? So by locking my position, locking my size, I am in essence locking the original bounding box that I started with, okay? That's why I'm turning these on. If you don't have those on, when you start changing the mesh, you'll see the stuff keeps moving in space. Because you're changing your bounding box. And then the sliders are saying, well, you're telling me to be so far away from each mesh. That's why it's doing that oil change, just since you're bringing it up. All right, so let's continue on because you know what? We're going to make another array mesh anyways. So let's duplicate this. And let's just put this as design. Okay, I don't know. I'm running out of names right now. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and make this again. I'm going to center this. And I'm going to make this a cube. Okay, so what we have is this. Let's go ahead and crease this. Boom, so we have this. Okay, and I want this to live up here. Something like this, let's just say. Okay, and then I want this to, you know, could live more in that world. And let's go ahead and array mesh this. Okay, and I'm going to go with, let's go with five. Why not? And again, let's rotate along the X. I know I need the X. And I'm actually going to even rotate now the shape. Like, mm, let's go 35 degrees. Right? And then now when I pull apart, I want these sitting at a little bit of a different angle than everything else. That's why I rotated the physical mesh 45 degrees as well. Okay, 
And let's push this down. It's going to live here. And then now I want this Q mesh pull this out. I am going to hold the shift key till it gets to this point. Okay. There we go. And then now let's go over this edge space bar insert multiple edge loops. And I'm going to say, let's insert some multiple here. That's, that's enough. I'm going to del delete the middle one. Okay. So this is what I'm doing, right? So you guys can visually see insert multiple edge loops and I'm going to delete that middle one because I don't want that middle one anymore. And let's go ahead and Q mesh. Let's pull this up, but again, hold the shift key. So we get a shape more like that. Okay. Something like this. And now let's do a little bit more to this. Okay, right now we've got dynamic subdiv on with four subdivision levels. Let's go ahead and knock the creasing down to two. And now let's in fact uncrease that edge, that edge, that edge, that. In fact, let's uncrease this whole edge loop right there. Because I want something that looks more like that. Right? So it's got a little bit of a rounded dome kind of look to it. That's what I'm looking for. Something more like that. Okay. And then now again, I want to make sure it has this material. So color fill object. All right. So there we go. We've got now these inner portions of these headphone going. All right. Now let's, let's keep moving along here. Let's keep, and now let's add this mesh part. Okay. So I'm going to append something. I'm going to say append all right, and let's append a plane. Boom. Okay, and let's call this mesh. All right, and let's even let's let's make a new folder for this uh, mesh part. And then I got this in a new folder. So now I've got two folders, right, with some starting groups in it. And then now I've got this mesh part. Okay. Um, so now here's where that's living. Right, so let's change this up. Let's rotate this 90 degrees so it's facing, I want it to face this direction. Right now it's facing along the Z. So I actually wanna rotate it. I'm holding the shift key, going to 90 degrees, and then I'm going to pull this out all the way here. And then I'm watching until what I just created in essence disappears. And I don't wanna go too far, right? I wanna probably only go a certain I want to go right about there. Okay. Something like that. Right. And then now what I'm going to do, which is a lot of fun, super easy. And again, you know what? I want this to be gold. So we're going to select my gold material. Fill that object. So now it's gold. Okay. So now I have that. <clears throat> and let's go now into geometry. All right. And I'm going to turn on dynamic. So what this is going to do is smooth everything out now, right? Just creating smoothness. I'm actually going to turn off that smoothness. I'm going to say no smoothness at all. I'm going to say get rid of it. So I'm going to knock the smoothness. So in essence, I've got dynamic subdiv turned on, okay? But I've got nothing in essence happening to it, right? That is definitely this from here on. This is a Lisa needs braces. 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 Whenever I do this, for those that don't know me, I'm going to give you some information that's important. So pay attention. Stop looking at Facebook. Stop looking at Instagram. Look at look at what we're doing here. Okay. So now I'm going to say micro poly on, and I'm whatever I want here. Right. I used this one. Right. And then there you go. That is my pattern now that I have, okay? And then now this is micro polys. So we can make this be anything we want really, right? Whatever cool pattern you want to put on this, you guys can do it. So I wanted something that at least had, you know, kind of like some holes in it so you can see all that stuff that's inside, right? It's rather important, okay? And then now I'm gonna say, all right, I need this. This is a micro dynamic subdiv. So which means is this isn't really existing right now, right? So I want to turn it into real topology. So I'm just going to say apply. 
And now this is real topology. So now you can see I have, here if we turn this off, all the topology for this. Okay, and then now, okay, I don't need this. I don't need all of this. This is just too much, okay? I'm gonna hold control shift. Again, look at bottom screen left, right above the pixel logic logo. You can see the hotkeys I'm holding, right? Just, but does anything really exist, John Y? Okay, I like it. All right, <clears throat> and then now, Wait, I don't know why I can't see micro poly. What do you mean you can't see micro poly? Well, you got to have, I don't know what version of ZBrush you're using because that's a newer feature. Uh, I want to say we gave this in 2021.5. Okay, so make sure you're using the most recent version. Then you're not using the most recent version if it's not there. All right, and then now I'm going to hold down Control Shift. Yeah, it's not in 2020. And now I'm going to hold in control shift click on this and i'm gonna grab slice circle and i'm gonna say that slice circle to be a square okay and centered yeah you're like three versions behind now m, &M. 2020 is old like we've had 2021 2021.5 2021.6 2021.66 you're you're quite a few versions behind i would recommend upgrading and you can keep 2020 on your system and when you just go get the installer and you can install 20 have 2021 and get the new installer for 2021 you could have both there if you really wanted to okay so now now that i have this selected i'm just gonna hold towards the middle here and say okay let's make this and i just need to slice this right around here and then let go. And what I'm doing, why I'm using that, is I want to make a new poly group that's a circular. So now I can just show that portion only, right? And then now I can say, let's go ahead and delete hidden. And now let's make another slice for giggles. Let's go maybe right around here, right? And then now that's another poly group, see? Right? And you guys can see masking wise. And then you can even pull on this a little bit. And then now just pull on that. And then that's where I want that to live. Make sense? Everyone with me on this now? Okay, and that's how I did this mesh part. Like, it wasn't crazy complicated. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust this. I'm going to give this a little bit more of a ridge. Just a little bit more. There we go. Like that. Okay, there we go. Now let's move on to the pattern that's in here. Okay. That one's pretty easy as well. Okay. Uh, since that's going to be something new, I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to load from the light box. I'm going to load this polysphere. I prefer using this polysphere. Okay. So I'm going to double click that from light box. Now I've got this ready to go. Okay. Come on. Come on. Hold on. My... All of a sudden, my pen stopped working. There we go. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to go back. I've been working on this guy right here. And I'm going to now append that new sphere. Okay. I got this. Let's go ahead and call this... Uh, what do I want to call this? Let's just call this main inner mesh. Okay, and I'm going to folder this as well. Mesh. Uh, inner here. Perfect. Yes, I know. It's perfect. All right, and so this is sitting here. I'm going to go ahead and just move this in space right about there. Let's size it up a little bit. Some around. Let's go right about... Let's go right about, I think, yeah, that looks good from this side. That looks pretty good. Okay. And then now this is very cool. Okay. This is another one of these. Right. This is a Lisa needs braces moment. Watch the sphere. Bam. See that? I'm actually clipping the sphere down because I want it to live like right about there. 
and then I don't need the other side, so I'm going to clip that down. So what I've done is actually flattened both sides of this spherical shape with the gizmo. That's it. Right? Simple. Simple, simple, simple. And what I'm doing is, so you guys, can, again, get a visual understanding here. Okay? This is, everyone's paying attention, right? Don't make me do the look up here. Okay? I hold down the control key and then just click on a cube. Right? So wherever this lives is where it's going to clip to. See? And see, now it's just going to clip. And then obviously if I go this direction, it's clipping the other side. Right? So our gizmo isn't just a gizmo. Our gizmo is never about just, okay, you can move scale and rotate with it. We put a bunch of stuff in there because as you can see, you can work fast with this kind of stuff, right? So I want to live right about there. So I want it to be right about there. Okay, and the other side just needs to be right about there. Okay, and then now let me position this a little bit more like that. Okay, and then now let me even grab this, right? And then let's even throw a taper on this, okay? This has got subdivision levels, so I'm gonna delete those. Okay, and again, gear, taper, and then now I can taper this in, and I want it to taper in like that. I want to kind of have it rounded out a little bit like that. Perfect. And then now I'm going to stretch it to right about there. There we go. All right, and just so we've got a better visual for all of us, let's assign uh, a different color to this, and let's even put a different material. So let's grab a material, let's see, let's go this metal maybe with a little bit darker. Every, I, every time I click on the hot pink, I want to make it hot pink. <laughs> like I'm so tempted to uh, make this be a diff different like hot pink color. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's live in that world, okay? Uh, then color, fill object. You guys go ahead and make it hot pink if you want. You can rewatch this. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now we've got this. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is let's go ahead and duplicate this one again. Right. Again, put it in the folder, make sure it's in the folder. And this one's now going to be called, I'm going to move my keyboard, inner mesh part. Okay. And this, let's size this one. So let's center it. So make sure I'm centered. Okay, and then let's just size it up just a little bit, like right around there, we'll say. Okay, so I'm just reusing the same thing. Okay, and now I'm going to come down here. All right. Oh, Pop Ross, love it. Listen, that is an amazing compliment. Thank you, because as a child watching Bob Ross was like, what is he doing? Okay. Love it. Can you do the same thing with the sphere in the gizmo? Yes, you can do this with any shape, West. It's any piece of geometry. That's not just that gizmo clipping. It's with anything, whatever you want. All right, and let's again use some micro poly. So I'm going to turn on dynamic. I don't want any smoothness. And then let's turn on micro poly. And this time for this, I used kind of more of like a meshy. Where are you? I used this one, right? And then that's creating that look for me, right? And then I want this to kind of, I'm gonna shrink it down just so it's kind of hitting that other sphere. And then there you go, right? And that's what's giving me that pattern in there, right? And then even if we change the, we'll make this one darker a little bit. So you really adds a little bit of a contrast between the one inner sphere, right? Gives me that contrasty look. Let's go darker. Yeah, there we go, right? And it's all looking in. You can really see what's going on in there. You're too kind, Maker JP. Okay. And this can all get sent to Keyshot, no problem. All right, because <clears throat> especially if you have the bridge. So here we go. As you guys can see, we are starting to make, remake this. Okay, so let's keep moving along here, right? 
Let's keep trucking along here because it's 1220. Let's now do the soft body part right now. Let's do that ear piece, okay? So because I already have this, right? And this is this is the size of that I want, right? I know this circumference is good. Oh, hello from England. Hold on, I got to take a water. Okay, there we go. 100% it's going to be on YouTube and our Twitch channel. Yep, this all gets is all being recorded. No worries. You're not going to you're not going to lose anything. Thank you. I'm trying. Hey, oh from Amsterdam. Oh man, I'd love to go to Amsterdam. All right. So here we go. I'm going to take this main piece where we started with way back an hour and a half ago. And I'm going to duplicate that one now. And I, let's rename this soft ear, uh, soft ear, whoops, soft ear. Okay. And I'm going to move this out of this folder. So I'm going to click this and then just drag down and put it in the bottom. And let's put this in its own folder, soft. Okay, and now let's just solo this out so we're only looking at this again, right? And what I actually want are these faces right here. I want these faces. Okay, so I'm going to get to the point where this, I have back to just a flat plane, right? I'm just using polygroup selections to do this. And then I just did that painting thing with the modeler once again, right? No, again, I'm repeating stuff that I've done now multiple times in many, 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 many ways, right? <clears throat> so moving along, let's now delete everything else. I don't want anything else, all right? And I'm gonna say delete hidden. So now we're back to having this, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and say Q mesh. I'm just going to say all polygons and then go this direction. So, and then I'm going to repolygroup. It's just me. I like to repolygroup things. So, what we're making is this, right? <clears throat> and then this, I'm going to put it more right there. Okay, that's good. And again, this has got to, this has got to be different, right? So, I'm going to assign a completely different material also for for this. Okay, because I need this to look. A little different. I'm going to use the basic material on this and let's color fill object that now. So we got something like that. Let's, I'm not going to go as dark. I'm going to normally go darker because it's going to be, but for the sake of, for you all being able to see it, I'm not going to go as dark. And you know what? Let's, do you guys want to have some fun? Maybe, maybe, we, maybe we make this one have some color in it just so it stands out. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, it looks ridiculous. Okay, whatever. Let's make it blue. Why not? Or in fact, let's just grab. Let's grab. Let's see. Let's let's actually no. Let's live in the gold, so that it at least matches a little bit more to the gold, because this is obviously a different type of material as well. Let's go. Yeah, let's go in that world. Let's go there. Just so at least it looks a little bit better. Yes, I'm rebuilding the whole thing today for you. 100%. All right, so <clears throat> here we go. Now this, again, is low polygon. So once again, okay, I'm actually going to do something here. I'm going to get rid of my creasing this time. So I'm going to uncrease all. So then it looks starts looking like this. Right? That's starting to soften up and round it up a little bit. Okay? But what I'm going to do now is this edge right here. I'm going to hold space bar. Insert. Multiple edge loops. Once again. And then I'm going to say interactive elevation now. I'm going to turn on my interactive elevation. Right? And then now, click. And I can actually add spans and create more volume you guys see that so here let me solo this out and turn this off right so see that looks more like this now see this volume here that's not what 
as what I necessarily had. Right, so here I'm going to turn off dy dynamic so you guys can really see what's happening. See? So right and left, like right's going out, and then I can even go inward, right? And then up, down, up, down changes the number spans. So I'm going to go with something more like that. And in fact, I'm going to delete that one and give me something a little bit more like that, right? And then that's more what I'm looking for for these headphones, right? I want something that has some nice roundness there, right? But then has has an edge there because it's this is a like a more of like a leathery type of material. Okay. Uh what does click normal S do? Uh I'm not sure what you're referring to. Are you referring to one of these features? Oh, this is using what normal? You're talking about this? This is per polygon, per actual normal, or averaging out all the normals. You're going to get a different result, right? So it's using the clicked normal as the main normal for how the edge loop should be added. Okay? And then averaging is just averaging them out. But if you're doing a per polygon, it keeps looking at all the polygons while it's doing that. So if that's what you're asking. Okay? So now here we go. Let's do this. I definitely need a single edge loop here. Okay. And then these faces here. Here. So let's solo out so you guys can really see. These faces here. We're going to Q mesh these in now to do that. Okay. And then here, I'm going to bevel this a little bit. And so when it smooths, I get a little ridge like that. Right? That's why I'm adding this bevel. I want a little bit of roundness right there. Okay? And if you guys want to make this more predominant, you put another edge loop in here, right? So I do this and see I can kind of make that be even a little more a little more strong. And if you wanted to, right? We can even add another little ridge right here. Something like this. Polygrouping is going to be important. Right? And you can do stuff like this. So you got a little ridge in there now. See where I'm going with all this? Okay? And so now this, also, I also want to put a little dividing point in here in this. So I'm going to once again use multiple edge loops. This time, no elevation. None whatsoever. And I want that. So let's do that. <clears throat> and then Q mesh this in. Change that polygroup on the fly again. Again, I'm tapping the Alt key. Look at the bottom left above the logo. And there. there. Oh, no. That, that I don't like. No. No, 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 no. I don't like how wide that is. So I'm just going to quickly fix this with some masking. And again, people, look up here. I'm not holding the keyboard. I still got the masking. I know I just scared somebody. I love it. I'm going to hold the Alt key. And then now those vertex points in the middle are unmasked. And what I want to do is use the gizmo to bring this closer together. I want a, a more defined, yeah, something more like that. Right? Because that's what I want. So then we turn everything on. That's more what I'm looking for. Okay. Starting to come together. Let's now add some of the softness or ripples in here right and it's a donut it's almost a donut daniel almost there okay heroes bench collectibles thanks for joining us watch the stream after for we're going to do the rest of it too okay so now i'm going to go ahead and tell zbrush all right i want this topology i don't want 128 faces so i'm going to hit apply and what I get is this now. So this is now subdivided subdivisions, right? In here. Okay? So what happens is the dynamics is turned into real real topology, right? Okay, so 33,000 is pretty good. I'm going to go with 33,000. Okay? And now what I'm going to do is let's put a little, a little more elements in here. Let's have a little, a little more fun with this. So I'm going to go brush C, okay? And I'm looking for cloth, pinch, trails. 
I'll hold on that for a moment so you guys can see this. So that's the brush I'm going to select. Okay. And now I'm going to go with a, a bigger brush size. Like two is not big enough. Okay. And now, <coughs> excuse me. I'm just going to start moving along here and start creating those ripples that I want. Right. And I'm changing my pressure to change also the rippling or the folding, if, if you will, that I'm going to get in here. Right. And then that starts creating that look. So immediately this now starting to look more like a, I'd say like a leather part maybe. Okay. And then now let's also go in here, polygroup. Okay. And let's select out this polygroup. Uh, this one, this one. Okay. I'm going to mask that off. So those are masked. So that way when I do the same thing here, right, it is creating a little bit of a crease in there. And you know what I'm going to also do? Let's add a little of something. To, instead of going in, I'm going to turn this on to Z add. And let's knock the intensity way down of this brush. I'm going to knock it down. I don't, let's try 20. Okay. And the difference here now is this is going to pull out instead. So I want that ridge to look like it's kind of more like it's being folded inward. Right. So that's more of a look I'm trying to go for. And so I'm just going to continue this. So again, I've changed this to Z add. And. Right. And so now when we unmask this, this is what we start to get. Okay. So now we're getting something a little bit more like this. All right. And then now let's continue this process and this idea. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to now go to dynamics and I'm going to tell it to look at the collision state right now. Okay. And so I want to tell ZBrush, okay, this selected mesh that I have, which is this earpiece. Okay. I want you to use this as the mesh that I'm going to do something to, but all the other sub tools are used as an essence collision states, right? <clears throat> So now that I have that, I'm now also going to, again, once again, let's do some specific masking here that I want to do. Okay, so there. Here, I'm just going to sew this out so you guys are just seeing this. Let's take this one and this one and this one now. Okay, and I'll mask this so I get like this, and I'm going to inverse it. So I've masked the whole inner part. I've masked this inner part, and I've mas masked this inner part. Make Believe TV, uh, that brush is, I wouldn't classify that brush new anymore. No, that brush is now over a year old. Like, I don't even remember now, because we've, we've literally done five releases of ZBrush in a year and a half. Uh, I don't remember if we put that, did we put that in 2021 or 2020? I don't remember, I think 2020. So it's new-er, but not new-new. There's a lot of ways to earn money from models inside of ZBrush. There's a ton of ways. Toys, collectibles, tabletop gaming, like the gathering, sell in there, make jewelry. There's so many ways. You could definitely make some money on this. All right, so now that I have this mask, I'm going to go back to dynamics. I'm actually going to turn off gravity. I don't want gravity. I'm going to turn on expand instead. And I'm going to make this be a little bit more aggressive. Something maybe more like that. Okay. And then I'm going to have it have some self collision a little bit. And then now run my simulations. And there. Click to stop. So you click in the document to stop. Right. So now you have something like that. Like this looks a little ridiculous right now. Right. So what I'm going to do now is just lightly start pushing some of this back. Right? So get use the dynamics to give me some major, big, big, big ripples. I use the brush to give me some small stuff. And now I'm using this to give me some bigger, bigger ripples, right? And then now I would want some different 
look in certain areas, so not as much. So it just starts breaking up that look a little bit. And then this is way too extreme. Let's go back to getting that to be smoothed down a little bit more. There you go. Right, so now if we turn this on, right, you can start looking at what you're doing as well here. So I'm just trying to create this to create some kind of little bit more rippling or, or bending or ripping on, on unevenly through there, right? Go. And now if I want, again, going back to this cloth brush, right, you can even start through here, right, doing stuff like that. So I'd probably go with a smaller brush size. And you can add ripples through there if you want to as well. Okay. So maybe I go up maybe even one more subdivision level now. That'll soften everything up a little bit. And then now... It's just too much now. So I'm going to go a lot lower. So this is all... This is how I did all this. So I'm going to turn off the dynamics now. So that the brush is just the brush. It's not any of the dynamic stuff. And then in certain areas, just add a couple more variations in there and then smooth it back. Right? And then now, I don't like the size of this. I'm going to make this a little bit more like that. Right? And then this is the process that I did to make that. This part, this, all this, and all this. Right? Okay? Uh... Yeah, it looks like... Hold on. Yeah, my connection is... Okay, hold on. I'm seeing... I'm looking, I'm looking at you guys are saying the connection's laggy. So I'm just... I'm looking at it on another screen and looking at my internet connection in OBS is fluctuating right now yeah the uh, stream is not as clear anymore uh, let's see um yeah I don't well, obviously the best way to do this is restarting but then the stream will drop and then it'll start another stream. But if you guys can't see what I'm going to be doing, what's the point? I'm fine here. Right, I'm just looking, seeing if I can do something maybe to improve. Okay. If I refresh, can you guys retry refreshing your browser maybe? And let's see if that will help. As well, mm, it's a little bit bad, but it's still not clear. Uh, it's not too bad. It's the webcam mainly. Okay, well for me now, the stream looks clean again the stream I'm looking at. Who cares about the webcam? Who cares about me? We can turn the webcam off too if we want. It's really about you guys being able to see what's in there. How is it now for you? Okay, it's fine for now. Okay. Okay, as long as it's working good now. All right, the yellow color is making me feel like mustard. <laughs> All right, so there you go. That's how I, that's the process in essence that I did for this part of the speaker, All right? So let's continue moving on because we still got more stuff to cover here. Uh, I'm going to now insert that polysphere again. This one, let's make this be a, a different material. Let's use fast shade. And let's make it be a gray color, a darker gray color. All right, darker gray color, MRGB, color, fill object. And then this, right, is going to sit right here. 
Let's size that up. And then I'm going to squash it. A little bit. Just so... I just want to make a little bit of a rounded dome look kind of... In there. So I'm just using a simple sphere to do that. Right? Something like that. Okay. And let's go ahead and rename this. Year mesh portion. Whoa. Portion. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's put it in the soft parts folder. We're going to make that a start group and that a start group. Okay. Something like this. Okay. Here we go. Hopefully the stream is working. Okay. And now <clears throat> I'm going to come down here to surface noise this time. And we'll look at this this way here. I'm going to click on noise. That'll bring in this piece that we have. Okay. In a new surface noise. And I'm just going to up the strength just a little bit here. Right now. And I'm going to use now the noise plugin. So I'm going to click on that noise plugin so this launches. Okay, so let me, it's on my other monitor. Hold on, my mouse is being, okay, here we go. There you go. Now you can see it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use snake skin. Okay, and then I'm going to say okay. So it's going to be like, well, what's going on here? Well, what's happening now is this piece is like a certain size and the noise is a certain size, right? And then here you go. I want to change the look of this. So I'm going to go to my plugin scale. Okay. And I'm going to make this start making this smaller. Something more like this. Now, the pattern is actually sitting in the wrong part of this sphere right now. Okay. I want the pattern sitting here. Right. So this is where these angles come into play, right? So there are different angles here that you can adjust. So I want this Y angle to be 90 degrees instead. I want that, okay, right there. And then now maybe go a little bit different in size. And then let me also now do a little other change. I'm gonna hit edit, okay? And again, let me get my noise. Here, and what I'm going to change is the roundness here, right? So I want this to have a different type of look. So see, I want to put a little more rounding there, and I'm going to put a little more rounding here. So just play with this a little bit. Something more like, I'd say more like that, okay? And then now if I hit OK, we'll see it here inside of ZBrush. Okay, so you see right now there's two noises actually okay, in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to say I don't want the both noises. I only want the, the plug-in. So this mixing slider here, I'm going to turn it off so that the only thing I do get is the noise from the plug-in. And I say OK. So see, it's a lot cleaner now. All right. And what I'm going to do is this spherical shape that I've added and we've squashed is only sitting at 24, 25,000 polygons. So I'm going to divide this up some. I probably 393 is probably going to be enough. 393,000 polygons in essence is what I'm looking at right here. Like I could probably even go one more. Like 1.5 is really still not a ton. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tell ZBrush this surface noise, okay, instead of applying it, which is fine, I can apply it if I want to. I just want to show this because I want you guys to be thinking differently as well. I'm going to apply it actually as a mask instead. So now this is masked noise. So I applied it as a mask. And the reason why I'm doing this is is then I can even do things like I can blur my mask a little bit if I wanted to. I could sharpen the mask a little bit, right? I can do a lot of things with this now, now that it's a mask, okay? And what I want to do is this. 
I'll, because I have a mask, how about I go to deformations instead, menu, and I use inflate, and then just start inflating this inward. So right now I'm making something that looks like that. Okay, and it's masked right now. And then say, okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna clear the mask, get rid of it, and then now I can just throw some polish on it too. And then this is how I made that pattern. Right, so I would say looking at this, I need to go back. My pattern, I think isn't small enough right now. Right, so let's go back to one at the surface noise. Let's edit this and let's go even smaller with the pattern. Maybe something something more in that world. Okay, and then map. And then once again, deformation. And I'm just gonna inflate just a little bit. There, yeah, that's enough. I'm gonna get rid of the mask and then I'm just gonna polish it once so it just even smooths things out with the pattern. Okay, it's a little too aggressive, the polish. So maybe do a polish of like one. There, something like that, see? There you go. And then that's how I created this portion. Right? Actually, Mr. Mars, don't even duplicate your mesh anymore. No, 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 Mr. Mars. There's a better way to even do what you're saying right now. Okay? I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to go on it, people. Those that know me, tangent time. Tangent time. Because I've been watching the... You guys answering in the chat for sure. All right. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm getting good connection. My OBS again. So here's another way. And this is for everybody. You know, even obviously this is now the way I do what you're telling Mr. Mars. I forget who you're talking to right now to get after you Z remesh something. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to load just the demo head for now. Just something simple. Let's divide them up a little bit. Let's get a different material on this and brighten this up. Okay. Let's add some sculpting, just variation on this. All right. Let's, he's got pimples. He's a wart man. Warts, warts. All right. And then let's throw a different type of pattern, maybe on the back here. Okay. And then let's put something very distinct that we can tell like a star. Let's put some of those in here, right? Let's put, why not? Let's put some on his forehead. Okay, so you, as artists, and when you guys are working, right? You're gonna wanna now Z remesh things, especially if maybe you're using other things like Sculptures Pro, right? In fact, let's do that, okay? So this mesh is already clean. Let's make it not clean. So let me go ahead and throw Dynamesh on this. Okay, and let's up the resolution. I don't need my subdivision levels. Okay, so now it's a Dynamesh, number one. Okay, and then number two, let's throw Sculptures Pro on this as well. So now I'm dynamically tessellating things, right? And so this is adding tessellation as I sculpt, right? Which is great. I use this for even a lot of 3D printing. I use this to soften edges. Like I use this for a lot of things. Okay, so you, you get, in essence, your questions coming through is, well, what do I, when I remesh this, right? Especially something like this, okay? It's been sculpted on, but the mesh is not clean anymore, right? So our response is, well, let's remesh it. Let's Z remesh this, okay? I don't duplicate anymore. That's dead. That workflow to me is dead. I don't do the duplicate much at all anymore. Okay? Which is fine. There's that that this is wrong and not what Mr. Mars was showing you was incorrect. It was correct. But I want to show you this because maybe you guys will like this even more. Right? So because I have this subtool that's sculpted, the goal of Z Remesher is to give me new topology and give me clean topology. And look at the sculpt and try and create flow that would match the sculpt in essence, right? But it's not, it, it can't maintain the sculpt. If you got a sculpt that's 10 million polygons, you can't remash and have way less polygons and maintain that sculpt. It's not going to happen, right? You're not going to get clean topology and maintain like super ridiculous 
looking sculpted detail. It's not going to happen, right? It's not the point of this. So when you do this, as you were asking, you've now just lost sculpted detail, right? It's gone. Like, so all those hours and days worth of work, I need to get it back. Okay, I need to get it back, right, to the version that I had. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide up a little bit just to give myself some geometry, okay? That's about in the same range I was living when I did this, 220,000 polygons. And I'm actually going to now, instead, I'm going to undo back to the sculpt. There, there's the sculpt, right? So see, that was 271,000 polygons. And I'm going to hold down the control key and tap on that undo now. That's now highlighted. Again, I'm up here for those that don't know. This is literally, I'll look up here. Look up here. Right? So I went backwards to this, held control and clicked this. Now I'm going to go forward back to the remeshed version that's sitting at 225,000 polygons. So now this is what my geometry looks like. And now all I have to do is in subtools... In the projection that we're talking about, instead of project all, project history. And now ZBrush is only going to project the difference between this marker and that marker. And bam, there you go. I did no duplicating, no nothing, and it had Sculptress Pro on it. It had decimate, it had Dynamesh on it. It doesn't matter what the mesh is in the previous undos. We're just taking the sculpt that you had and then projecting it in the new mesh. So this is how I personally now go about doing all of this, okay? This, to me, one less subtool to worry about, all this naming and all that. I can just do it all right. And then it's opened up other workflows as well for me, okay? There you go. That's how I go about doing that. Back, back to this. Back to this. All right. So let's continue on now. Let's make the headband. All right, so I'm going to append, I don't care what it is, anything. We're gonna make a new folder for this. Control F, uh, head, band, part. All right, and in fact, let's actually call this renaming the folder parts. So I'm gonna put more in here actually. So let's say parts, and I just drop it in. All right. Okay, so now I have this. Let's like, once again, that handy dandy gizmo. I'm gonna turn this into a cube, right? Have it come up here. We're gonna go about this big. Let's go right around there. Position that. And it's gonna go be about, let's go that wide of a headphone set. And let's bring this way down like this. Okay, something like this. All right, let's go ahead. And I want this part to be the same as this darker gray. So I'm going to click, drag, pick the pick the material. Click, drag, pick my color. You can see now it all matches. Our MRGB, color, fill, object. Okay. And then now this comes to the point back to way back when. This whole thing is sitting in the world, right? It's just sitting here. Okay. So what I want to do is move this in space. Okay. And now... Let's not forget, I have done some array mesh. So I'm just gonna convert all my array meshes. So I'm gonna go to array mesh and make mesh. And I think that was the only one that I didn't convert. Oh, here's another one, make mesh. Okay, they're all my, and I'm using the up and down arrow keys to cycle through my subtools. All right, <clears throat> so now I'm back to having, you know, a subtool selected, right? We'll go all the way down to this one. And what I'm going to do is say, all right, then let's go ahead and turn on this icon, which is multiple sub tool icon, or we're having a party. It's multiple pizzas because we're all in here having fun right now. Right? So now I'm going to now click this arrow and you see everything moves as a unit. So even though I have multiple folders, multiple sub tools, I am telling all of these to move as a unit. And put kind of where maybe I want now the one side of this to live. Right? And then now, because I started the process with only making one, 
obviously, you guys, if you were remaking this, it would probably be more smarter to have both sides being made at the same time, right? But I, for this stream, I did this on purpose because I wanted to show this also feature off and have you guys understand that you can move multiple sub tools and even multiple folders at once to the point people why I'm making folders. I can come here to the gear and I can say transpose set. And now the only thing that will move are the pieces that are in this one folder. See, this is so handy and I can hold down control shift and add that even though it's a different sub tool from a different folder. And then I can move those as a unit. This is so handy, especially for hard. Like this is how I pose with hard surface. I don't use transpose master. I use the gizmo with this feature, okay? So there you have it, right? Very useful, all right? And then now I drag to the side that's red because now I want the other side. So the other side is gonna be the easiest way to do this is just do mirror and weld, right? And then that'll give me all sides. So now I just down arrow key and then I'm just, I'm just down arrow key, mirror and welding, down arrow key, mirror and welding, down arrow key, mirror and welding. You see, I'm, and the other one's populating because it's creating the copies. And because I'm low polygons and nothing right now has subdivision levels, but this one does. Okay. So now how do I get this also over there? And this has got subdivision levels. How can I do this? Well, you can actually mirror over a subdivided mesh using a plugin that we have, which is Subtool Master. So there's a mirror right here. This mirror is going to allow you to keep subdivision levels. Okay. So now I've got, I merge to one subtool along the X axis. I say, okay, see, and boom. So now I still have, I have both sides and it's got my subdivision level. So now if I down arrow key, that's selecting this piece. So I'd want to mirror here, hit okay, hit okay. I'm fine with that, right? Let it go through the process of making it. It's dividing up the mesh and then there, right? Once it's done, let it finish. Well, it's making the subdivision levels for me now. Okay, operation complete. There you go. So I got both sides. See, so even though know, you guys, if you model something and you forgot to put the other side, you've got two ways to do it now. Okay. What's going on, Alex? Welcome. Okay. So now I'm going to click on this and let's just mirror and weld this over. So we got two of these now on each side, right? And let's make sure we have Z modeler selected once again. Okay. And I'm going to cover over this face right here and I'm going to use delete and I'm going to turn on symmetry with X and click that. So it actually deleted this face and this face. So once again here, I'm going to turn on my display properties to double. Okay. So you guys can just start seeing things. Okay. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is tell ZBrush, how about edge wise? Right, we bridge. And not only that, two holes, and I'm gonna make it a round bridge. Okay, so now all I have to do is click on one edge, click another edge, and boom, we got headphones. Right, so now this is how how high do you want, like, is it St. Louis? For those that don't know the joke, St. Louis has an arch, okay? Or is it more like, you know, is it a cartoony character, or is it more you know, like humanoid, right? So all you're doing is left to right, changes the, the bridge up and down, gives you your spans. I don't need a lot of spans here, okay? So mm, I'm gonna say that's probably good enough. There, that's good enough. And there we go. We've got now these arching headphones portions, okay? So I wanna do a little bit more with these. So here, I'm gonna solo this out. So we just look at these for now. Back to having symmetry, making sure I have symmetry on, right? I'm going to, someone's from St. Louis. Yes, rename card. Are you from St. Louis? Or you just know the arch then, so you got my joke. It's a bad one, people, but is it a bad one? Okay, so now I'm gonna say insert a single edge and let's put one more edge right here. Okay, that looks, 
right about there looks good. Okay, and then I'm gonna hover over an edge again, and this time I'm gonna click Add to Curve. Okay, and to save myself some time, I'm gonna look at the front here, and I'm gonna click here, 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 here. Right, so you can click curves like this, right? Okay, but people, 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 you also could come in here into the stroke menu, right? And you can say frame it by polygroup. Right, so instead of me clicking multiple times to add a single curve point, I just did by polygroup. Okay, so I'm now, I also want to go here and here, I think. Okay, because this, this feature is not symmetrical. So that's why I was showing you that ability to actually add the curves based by your polygrouping. That's why polygroups are so important. And why is this anything? Because watch this now. If I hover over a curve where it says, now it says delete curve. If I hold the space bar, I can actually change it to bevel. And now I bevel all curves, and then now I can do this. Just adding another nice little element to this, right? Let me make sure. Right? And now I'm going to now say, let's do some creasing here. Right? So I'm going to go back to creasing. We can crease by old PG. That was also beneficial. You know what? I also want to crease. That edge, that edge, those edges there. Get those creased. And I didn't turn symmetry on. Okay, and let's crease across there. Turn on dynamics. Make sure I'm getting everything I want creased. And creating that look. Right? Just, just that little bit right there really changes your designs a little bit and just gives a little bit more life to the piece. Okay, there you go. There's that. Okay, now that we have that, you can reuse this over and over and over and over again, right? And do whatever you want with this. Cool, everyone got that? So, again, I'm going to, let's duplicate this. So I have another version of this. And let's actually go back to this one. And let's undo, actually. Let's go back to not the beveling. Okay, because I want to actually reuse this topology now to do this part and this part. So I'm going to keep reusing it. The shortcut for dynamic subdiv is D to turn it on, Shift D to turn it off. Okay, D turns on, Shift D turns off. Okay. All right, <clears throat> here we go now. Uh, this piece is now going to become this piece, right? So I'm looking at this. I'm going to say I want this portion, this portion, and this portion. Let's make that a new polygroup. Okay, and in fact, let's have a lip go over this. So let's insert multiple edge loops. And let's make, yeah, like that. So then let's make these and that, and that be its own polygroups. Okay, and then in fact, I'm gonna use this more than once. So I'm gonna duplicate another one of these. So I've got more than one, right? And then the only thing I wanna keep now, right, is this polygroup. I just want this polygroup. It's the only thing I want is that one right there. Okay, and then now let's delete the hidden. All right, and for the sake of what we're doing here, let's go ahead and add a new material. So let's throw this material on it. It's just got a different material. All right, and now I need some thickness to this. So I'm going to Q mesh. I'll go all polygons. And again, I'm going to pull out this, change my polygrouping on the fly. Okay, so we have something like that now. And let's now turn on this again. And then this I want to have 
this material. So we'll fill that, go back to this. And now, whoops. Now you'll see this is what I'm starting to make, right? It's that simple. It's not crazy rocket science, people. It's just, that's it. And then now I turn on dynamic. Do I want it to look like that? Probably not. So then back to my handy dandy creasing. I'm gonna drop my crease level to two, turn my dynamic. This is all repeating items that we've already discussed here, okay? And then now I'm gonna say, let's do symmetry and let's even symmetrically go across the Z. And I'm gonna say single polygon and let's have this be more something like that. And let's take these edges and let's slide one of these edges down, slide one of these edges down there and then there, there is this clip. And then you know what? Let's go ahead and crease those. So it creates a little bit, you know what? I think I'm going to even slide those to fit more like that, right? That's it. That's, that's how this was made. It's not, it wasn't difficult to make that. It was really easy. I'm reusing topology that I already have that exists, right? And if I want to, let's make this be a little bit not as rounded. So I'll add some edge loops in there. So I get something that looks more like this. There you go. There's that piece. Like if I wasn't talking people, like that piece literally took me a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, so of course there's a way to move sub tools to the center without resizing. Yes, of course, Sina. There is more than one way to do that. Okay. The easiest way to do that is right here in geometry there's position right here. You just zero all those out and it'll move that subtool back to the center of the world. It's that easy. Okay, your other way also could be using the gizmo. If you center it right, and then you hit this little house key. So what it does is moves the gizmo back to the center of the world. So if you, in my case, I was holding the alt key. If I don't hold the alt key, see it moves. And it's based upon the gizmo, not the mesh. So if I center, right, I'm looking at this. And right now, if I turn off this and this, no symmetry on, see it centers this. And if I hit home, see it moved the gizmo. What it also did would move those down. Okay. So there's a way to do it. You could also go to transform and you can do a set pivot point. So there's more than one way to do it. Okay. There you go. All right. So let's continue on. Uh, this piece, okay, that's that, that is, so this is why you got to name things. Main head band, okay, this is going to be rename, I'm just going to call it clip to keep typing easy, and then rename soft head, whatever, okay, and so now let's make this piece now. Right, And so all I did for this piece was went, okay, I don't need this topology, right? I don't need any of this. So I'm just using, like that's good enough for me, okay? So then I'm gonna say, let's delete hidden that, right? So, well, what I wanna do is, did I take away too much? Which I did, right? So control shift X there, that's, that's the geometry I want. Right, and then now do a delete hidden. And now all I'm left is this, okay? Looking at this, I don't want, right, any mesh here, right? So I don't want any of these faces actually. Okay, so I'm just gonna assign them a new polygroup real fast. And then that way I can do this and then delete hidden. I'm going to re-polygroup. So we got one polygroup again. And then now all I need to do is Q-Mesh. Once again, all polygons. Pull it out. I'm going to re-polygroup. And this is my soft body now. Hold on. Let me go turn it back on. And now we need to make this look a little bit better, right? So number one, I'm going to select the material frame because this is what I actually put on it 
And then I'm going to say, yeah, let's go a little bit, a little gray. Okay, and then I'll say color, fill object. Uh, maybe too much gray. <laughs> that hot pink really wants to get into one of my models. Okay, that looks good there. All right, perfect. So then when this smooths, it looks like this. Right, and now what I want to do is put a little bit more ridging in this. So I'm going to say, all right, <clears throat> let's put an edge loop here. Right, and then let's do it symmetrically. So once again, let's go along the Z. All right, and then now I want to take this. Okay, so I'm going to do Q mesh, poly loop flat so that only these faces move, right? And then when I smooth it, you start seeing this happening, okay? And I definitely want these faces here, right? So these faces right here, let's just add another polygroup to them, right? I want them to come out a little bit. So I'm gonna go polygroup all, instead of doing this, I'm gonna Hold the shift key, pull them out a little bit more, something like that. So we get that soft starting to happen. And then now I can play with this some more, sliding complete edge loop and say, let's soften these corners up a little bit by just sliding around the edge loops that already exist on the model. Right, and this is what I love about dynamic subdiv. I'm repositioning things, right? And going at it a little different, right? And let's let's go ahead and give this so it doesn't look so faceted. Let's give it a little bit more topology. And you know what? These ends here, cancel. These ends here, I'm gonna, let's crease these, okay? So let's crease these edges here, right through here. Okay, so I'm going to say crease, flat island, uh, uh, whoops, outer edges, and target, outer target. So we can do this, right? I want this creasing right through here. Right, I want these edges, whoops, these edges crease right here. Okay, so that when I go to divide, actually I do want that one creased. I divide, I get a little bit more something like this. Let's see what else I want. Oh, I want this one to divide too. There we go. And that one as well. Now I'm getting my mind in like making things now. Okay, there. And then now I'm gonna soften that up by just knocking down my crease level. And that'll start softening up those edges a little bit. And then it'll fit with where I want that to go now. Now we can start doing some more adjustments. Okay, and I can grab a deformer and I'm gonna grab this red cone and pull it. So now this is telling the deformer to be symmetrical. And so now I can move just some points around, do something like this. Maybe I want it even to taper a little bit as it's coming to that metal part. And then there you go. This is how I started making that piece right there. Right, this is all I did. It's like I said, it's not anything too crazy. It's just me taking advantage of what I have, right? And then now I did for one more thing, I did throw some surface noise on this just to kind of start breaking it up a little bit. Just using this noise like that and then going darker. Oops. Darker blend color.
right? Just to give, especially so it can look very different than everything else. All right, and I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, these edges are, are creased right now. So let's do a partial uncreasing of those. There we go. Because I want it to be more rounded there. There you have it. All right, so there's that part. Pretty simple. Nothing too complicated. Okay. And then now I need this part. That, that That's pretty simple too. Okay. So I'm going to, again, once again, append something. I'm actually going to replace this. And people, I'm, I, I'm running out of time too. So I'm not going to go as much step by step anymore, especially for things that I've already covered and repeated. So I'm just showing you now the process of what I did to even make these pieces. So this is me just taking a cube, right? And then just positioning this by the floor on the X side and say, okay, it needs to be this big. I'm gonna have it sit right about there. Let's go right about there. And then this side, let's bring it in just a little bit like that. Okay. <clears throat> and then all I did then is insert an edge loop here, edge loop here, right? And then I took, again, once again, Unmasking and doing this. So I want those to live there. Okay. And then now I want these points to kind of live more like that. And then I want these points to just kind of have a little bit of an archway like that. And then turn on dynamic. This is what we're going to get. And once again, we are living in the world of dynamic subdivs with four smooths. And then I'm adding a crease. So I can get a crease and then I'm knocking down the crease amount. And then there is that piece. Okay. And then of course we want this piece to have the same color and same material. So we want that color fill object. So now we got that piece. Okay. And I want in mine, I got it coming down like this, right? Okay, so this is easy, actually. Okay, I'm gonna grab this with Q mesh, single polygon, right? And I'm just gonna pull on this and hold the control key. So this will rip it off. So this is 100% one of these Lisa needs braces moments. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces. Lisa needs braces, right? Again, pull on the face with Q mesh and then hold control key. And then I'll get this piece to be ripped off. And then now I'm just going to give it some volume. Okay. And I'll crease that. And then now I'm going to reposition this in a different spot. So I'm going to put it down here. Let's make it have an angle like that. Make it smaller even too. So there's a tapering to this. Okay. I don't know about that much tapering, maybe like this. It's a, it's a little too much tapering, I think. Okay, something like that. All right, and then now all I want to do here, we'll solo this out so we're looking at just this. Okay, uh, once again, we're in Z Modeler. Right, so I'm going to turn off this dynamic subdiv. Hold the space bar, delete, delete that face, delete that face, and then once again, use our bridging. This time I'm going to do an arc, do this, do this and give me that. And then when this does this, this is what I get. And there you go. Right, and then you can still continue to readjust anything that you want, right? So I can readjust this to sit more like right there. I want this to actually sit up higher. I want to sit more like that, something like that, yeah. I want that look instead. Okay, and then let's go ahead and mirror and weld it over. So we get one on the other side. So now that we have this in place, let's put some of this detailing in there, okay? And to do that was quite simple. In fact, here, I'm gonna make this be a little bit, have a better arch. This is just me being Nick picky, okay? And then now I want this. Let's see about adding the little details on this piece now. OK, 
okay? So let's, the spherical shapes are just that, spherical shapes. So brush, insert, and I am in primitives. Insert sphere, okay? And I'm gonna turn MRGB on, so when I insert this, I get the, the painting and, and, the, and the material as well, okay? And I'm gonna go to the brush palette, and I'm gonna go into my depth, and I'm gonna change the embed to zero instead of 100. That way half the sphere will be sitting outside the surface and half the sphere will be sitting inside the surface. And now I'm just gonna come right here and say, okay, I want that right about there. Turn my gizmo back on, reset it so I'm sitting straight up like this. I'm gonna hold the control key. I'm gonna click and drag to duplicate that, let go of the control key, and now I can create equal distant little spherical shapes. It's that simple, right? Not difficult at all. Pretty easy. Everyone's still with me, right? Because the last comment's been the same comment for a while now. Okay, uh, I'm assuming everybody's still with me, yes. I see people watching, but there's, there's no action now. Nobody's doing it. Okay, great, thanks, Dice K. Okay, so <clears throat> the next thing I wanna do is put the logo on the Z-Man, right? So this is actually really simple to do, okay? The sub-tool I have selected right now is this little earpiece. So let's actually put this in a folder. Um, I don't even know what to call this. Let's just call it above ear pieces, whatever. Okay, and then we'll rename this mean mean piece, let's say, okay. So I have this selected. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna use Spotlight. Okay, thank you everyone for chiming in. Okay. So now I'm gonna hold the comma key. Comma, 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 comma. All right. And then, I hope I hit my, I hit my microphone. So sorry for the noise. I'm gonna go here to where it says Spotlight. Right, and you can see right here, there's the logo right there. You need a couple look up here to wake you up. There you go, now you're up. Okay, so I can click this, but I'm just gonna click this one because I know the logo's in this one too. I'm gonna double click this twice. And what that did is change my Spotlight out to now this. And you can see there's multiple, there's the Pixelogic logo and there's this. So if I hit the Z key, I go in and out of the two modes of spotlight. There's a projection mode, which that's what this is. And then there's a mode that allows me to edit the image. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is grab this. And in fact, let's zoom in more to our model. Let's get really where we wanna put that logo. Right here. Hit the Z key, all right? And then this can snap to anywhere. It can even snap to mesh. So I'm gonna say, this and let's size this up let's look at it in the sense of this okay that looks pretty good so i'm just sizing the image okay with my size scale right and then this little camera all i do is click on that camera okay that's all i have to do is this little camera right here you just click on this and when you click on that camera okay zbrush if i turn off spotlight is creating the topology from that. So see, I, I clicked it twice, and over here in the subtools, it automatically adds it as a subtool. So I'm gonna delete the one I clicked on twice, right? And then you can see how long this is. Why is it so long? Is because I'm working on this subtool, which was selected, and then there's a right and left. So in essence, the distance from here to here was being calculated, okay? And that's why this is so long. So whatever the selected subtool I am on is going to be the deciding factor. Okay, so let's put this in this and we'll do this. Let's also just mirror weld this over while we can. There we go. And so now this geometry was built with a polygroup in the front. And here we're gonna assign gold to this. 
Okay, so you got a poly group here, a poly group in the middle, and a poly group at the end. The beautiful part is there's no spans in the middle. So I can do this, completely change the size of this if I want to, to be more like that. Right? And then now this is there. And let's say, okay, I need that to actually be more like right there. Okay. And then I'm also going to do another little trick. Okay. This one is for you. The you. -zers. Here's a Lisa needs braces. Oops. Lisa needs braces with a look up here, all combined. Look up here. All combined. All right. <clears throat> so what you can do is there's a bevel button here. This is using creased edges to bevel. Okay. But it can also use polygrouping. So if I hold down the control key, I can click the button or the slider and immediately add a bevel around the whole logo, which is going to be better especially to render with there. I want that. That's what I want. So now that logo will hit certain ways when you do this. And let's assign the whole material to this. I had this masked off. Our fill object. There we go. Okay. And then that's how I made that logo. Right. That's it. It's not, it's just using spotlights ability to bring an image. So anything that's pure white right, is maintained and given a piece of geometry. Anything that's pure black is masked out, so nothing will be created, right? So hopefully you all understand that, yes? I'm, no one's lost there, I would assume. Okay, so I am a user, nice. Thanks for going with the joke, I like it. So the logo on the top though, I had a Pixelogic logo on the top, right? So throwing this back into spotlight. Let's throw this back in here. We don't need this in here. Right? Looking at there we go. Okay, there's also a Pixelogic logo right here. This one I didn't do. Gray is ignored, Wintry Snowman. That feature of creating geometry from an image in spotlight, it only looks at pure white and pure black. So the grays will be ignored. Okay. Now, the Pixelogic logo, I used another feature, a completely different feature, how to do that. All right. So I looked from the top like this. I grabbed this piece, which is our main headband, right, that we have. Okay. I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to actually apply the dynamic subdivs to this. Right, so I want the actual geometry, so you get, I got this clean piece. Right, so it here, right, delete the lower, you can see I've got a very clean piece, right? In there, right? Compared to the original, is just low, low, low polygon with dynamic subdiv turned on. So I'm gonna turn off the original and use this, and let's rename this Pixo Logo. Right? And then looking at this, what I'm going to do now is let's bring in an alpha. Okay. And let's bring in just like that. Let's bring in an alpha of the Pixelogic logo, which I have. So give me a second. And let me go to my desktop here. Uh, let's this one of pages. Where'd you go? Mm, where did you go? I did have, I did have it. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, downloads. Maybe it's in there. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Where did I put that thing? Okay. Okay, there. So let's. Here we go. There it is. Okay. So what I have here, and this is a prime example is a Pixelogic logo. That the logo itself is black and then everything else is white. So again, pure black is being seen as transparent, okay? And the white is not. What I wanna do is actually use this alpha 
in a different way. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is in the alpha palette, I'm going to inverse it. So now I have the opposite. So what I have here now is the pixel logic logo, white, and then there's nothing else. Because again, the pure black is gone. So I'm going to now hold down the hold down the control key. And I'm going to go to my masking brushes. And I'm going to use now mesh project. Okay, I'm going to use that brush. And instead, I'm going to click instead of the stroke that's the lasso, I'm going to click rectangle. So everyone, Lisa needs braces. This is all step-by-step -step little information here, right? I'm going to select the rectangle. Then I'm going to go alpha, pixel logic logo. Right? And right now I have this selected. So while I'm holding the control key, start dragging out. Right? And you can see this is what I get. And when I let go, it's trying to make the logo. So what I'm going to do is turn off everything but this. Right? So that when I do this, right, I want that to happen. Right now I have symmetry on. So it'll start creating that logo for me. Okay? So one thing that I want to do now is instead of this rectangle being squared, I'm going to turn that off. That is going to allow me to do this. Okay, so now if I turn everything back on, I can now get kind of a bounding box of where I want this logo to sit, right? And make these pieces put to come together, right? I want that piece to start happening in there, okay? So this is just creating that. But what I don't like about this is what I'm getting as a result right this second. So what I'm going to do is while I'm holding down the control key, I'm going to come down here to the mask mesh modifiers. And you can see there's a bevel slider. I'm going to knock that way down. Let's put, let's try 0.1. And now let me draw out the logo. Nah, I need more than that. Okay, so I'm going to go 0.3. Maybe. Yeah, that's much better. And then also... I'm going to knock down the softness a little bit. And I'm going to up the resolution a little bit. And the resolution is dependent on two things. Number one, you can see my image is 4,558 pixels by 1314 pixels. Okay. But what's really going to help control that resolution is this, this right here. This is what's really controlling the resolution. So now... When I draw this out, right there, that's that's what I want. I want something like that, right? And then now I just have that where I want it. And you, that needs to have the gold as well. So gold, color, fill object. And then that is how I did this Pixelogic logo. Okay, and so now I can delete the duplicated portion and then there's the logo and then I can readjust this so it doesn't sit so high off right the piece different sizing and then there you go so now I got pixel logic on the top of my part Does that make sense so when you're doing this be careful of the solo you can't have solo on right so you gotta if you're gonna look at one piece of geometry just turn off the subtools with the eyeballs, like something like that. And you can turn everything back on. Hold the shift key, turning on and off all subtools. Yeah. There you go. No, you can't use dynamic subdiv to make a displacement map without applying the geometry. No. Because dynamic subdiv is just a visual uh, display. It's not real topology yet. All right, and then now the only real things that I have left to do for this um, is if I want to put a little bit more detail in here, like I did right there, it's just, again, simple using what I have, right? So I would probably duplicate this, right? And then I would go, let's look at just this piece, and I want probably the modeler. I want that face only. 
So let's go ahead and delete hidden. And we need a Q mesh now. This out like this. Let's go ahead and crease that again. Boom. And then now this, let's turn everything back on. Okay, and now this can be used as a subtractive, right? To cut into the surface. All right, so if I turn this off and then start doing this, right? So I want this to start cutting into the surface. The problem with this is it's very, 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 very low polygon, right? So you're better off, this is important, forget this. You're better off taking again this one. Let's duplicate it. Let's make a new f polygon face here, like something like this, right? And I know I want it to be not as wide. So why not just right out the gate, do something like that. And I'll delete these edge loops. And now there, okay? And then now let's apply the dynamics, delete the lower, and then now just give me only this. People, the reason why I'm doing this is now I've got topology that has that flow that I want. It's not just a straight cube. It's got an arch to it that's matching the flow of my headphones that I've been making here, right? And then now I just, I can pull this out. Whoops, let's do all polygons this time. Right, and then we need it also to go inward as well, right? So something like this. And let's see, Q mesh. Let's do polygroup all so that we can do that. So this is what I'm looking for. Uh, I forgot to delete my hidden. Something like this. And then this also goes inward. So we'll do something like that. And so now I get a piece of topology, it looks like this, right? And now I am going to turn that to a sub and then there, just like that, I've got that little opening now in the headphones. Right, they're pretty simple. Okay, and then it create this little repeating pattern right in here. So if we look at this again, Okay, there's a repeating pattern right here. Okay, all I did to do that, whoops. Okay, is I said, let's go ahead and let's insert something, doesn't matter what, like this. Okay, in fact, let's not even do that. Let's 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 get smarter about this. Let's take this piece, right? This, okay. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go brush, insert for I, I for insert. And I'm gonna grab again, this primitives brush. Okay, grab that. And I'm gonna grab this capsule right here. Okay, and this capsule when it draws out, it looks like this. So what I'm going to do is change the way this draws out. So I'm gonna go to brush, and then I'm going to say two mesh, right? And I want the capsule to be in here, right? So let me turn off spotlight. I don't, let's see, why am I getting, oh, I have the alpha still selected. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there we go. I want this. I had the alpha still selected, so it was giving me the alpha because that's what it can do as well. So I want this and I'm just going to move it more like that. All right, brush, create insert. I'm going to append it, right? So now I have one that's vertical and one that's horizontal for me. Okay, so going back to this, well, and that's the one I already made, this. Now I can just draw out, right? And we're going to go symmetry wise, Let's go along the X. So I'm drawing that out, something like that. And let's push it in a little bit there, right? And then, okay, let's go smaller. Let's go smaller. 
something like this, let's say. Like that, right? This is giving me one, right? Great. I've got one of these. What I want is multiple. I want to have more than one here, okay? So instead of doing just one at a time to get this, I'm going to do something else. Once again, you guys have noticed, I'm reusing a lot of topology over and over and over and over again. I'm going to duplicate this one, okay? And once again, I'm going to look at this and go, all right, we want these only to live in a certain area. So I'm going to set myself up, again, this chess analogy. It's chess. I'm going to split some polygons here, delete those so that I get these new polygons. And I want that pattern to probably start from here and go all the way around from here, let's say. All right? And then once again, I'm going to apply my dynamic subdivs. Okay? But before I do that, I'm going to insert one more edge loop down the center by switching to insert multiple edge loops and then a single specific resolution and I'm going to tap so then I get just this. Right? So the only thing I have are these pieces. And I'm going to go ahead and say, let's make now this a different polygroup here. Okay, so I want these two inner polygroups right here. It's important for me. Now I apply, I delete, and what I have is a lot more dense, right? Topology, and I want only this surface is all I care about. Okay, and in fact, I don't even need, right, any of this stuff if I, I don't really want it, okay? But it's not going to really matter for what I'm going to do. I then am going to tell ZBrush... Let's go back to this insert mesh brush. Okay. But instead of drawing one mesh insert mesh thing out at a time, let's tell ZBrush to do more than one. So I'm going to go to the stroke curve and turn on curve mode. So what I'm now done is this. I have a repeating of these happening, right? I don't like how close they are together. So I'm going to go to stroke. And change my curve stepping. Let's try point. Let's try two. Right? So that when I draw this out, see I'm repeating every other. So let's go. Let's go a little bit more. 2.5. There, that's better for me. Right? And now, now that I, I took the time again playing chess to make these two portions here, right? Now that I've taken that time. I can actually go to the stroke palette, go to my curve functions and tell it polygroup only and frame, right? And you can see it's going here. I don't want them to go right there. So this is why I would only show this portion. Okay. And so now these two polygroups stop right there. So when I do this framing, see, I just get one curve right there, right? And you don't want to have symmetry on. Because you don't want two of these. Now you just tap. And then there's that repeating item. And then the only thing I care about now for this subtool is this. So then I show these with by polygrouping with control and shift. Then I delete hidden. And now I have these that are following the curvature of this whole thing. Like they're all following that curvature. Okay. And right now, they are also being clipped out. So I'm going to move them down so they're not clipped out from that other mesh. Okay. And then the other thing that I added to this was I went into this gear here. Okay. I centered this. Then I went gear and clicked extender. And then now you can extend out. Whoops, wrong ones. Extend out here. Let me let me just do this. It'll be easier to see. Take this cone and see make them longer. So I want maybe something more like that. In there. So I just how long do I want that to be? And then that is how I can create that repeating pattern. So I'm using insert mesh brush along a curve to do that. All right, and then the last thing 
that we got to be able to do here is I'm going to append this and then I want this to have this color and that material color fill object. And again, I'm only going to use a cube like this. And let's position this now over here. Let's go a lot smaller like this, a lot smaller like that. Let's put that goes, we'll have it live right there. And let's go right about there. Let's push that in more. Something like that. Okay. And maybe I'll go, yeah, let's go a little bit wider. So let's switch to back to my masking pen. Right? And let's pull these edges out so they come out here more. Something more like that. Okay, so then this is what I have now. And let's go ahead and crease. As always, crease level to two. My dynamics at four. Yep, 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 yep. And now I'm gonna say, let's take Z modeler. Let's take that face, that face, that face, and that face. Yes. Uh, no, let's not take that face. Let's only take these three faces, okay? And then I'm gonna go over here to one of them, hold down the space bar, inset, okay? And I can have single polygon and I'm just gonna inset these. Something like that. Q mesh, polygroup all, push this in. Okay, so I got a little bit of a ridge in there. Let's crease that. Let's see what we got. Okay, looking good. Let's go ahead and crease. Let's just do a crease all. Yes, and then now let's add an edge loop here and an edge loop here. And let's add an edge loop this way. And let's add another edge loop this way. So now what I have is this piece. Right, and the one thing that may happen, right, this piece is could start clipping the stuff that's inside here, right? inside this. So that's an easy solve if it does. Okay, this would be a new folder, right? And then what I would do is I would duplicate this. And once again, handy dandy gizmo, grab the cylindrical shape, right? And we need it to be facing this direction. Okay, and I'll go ahead and Smooth subdivision, let's crease it. And now let's turn this into a subtractive, right? That way I can actually cut out, right? Any of this box that could be in the way here, right? So I'm using this to cut into that, right? Because if this block starts to get inside this part in here, you can just, this is why I'm using folders. This is why I'm naming things. Like, look what we've done here. We've got folders. we got start groups. This is all on purpose, people. This is all me making sure I'm setting myself up. Okay, and then the last thing is if I want to put a cord in, that's actually quite easy to do. Here, I'm just going to mirror weld this across. So we've got it on both sides. Okay, so now I want to put some kind of cord in. So I'm just going to, in fact, I'll just duplicate this. And then we can rename this. Cord, right? And then now I can say, okay, I got this here. Uh, all right, I'm gonna turn on local symmetry, turn on symmetry so that I can resize this up. And it needs to live right here. So it needs to be a lot smaller than that. Let's go. Let's go even smaller. Something around there like that. And then let's move this up here. OK, 
Okay, somewhere around there. Uh, okay, that looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and sh give this a different material. Color fill object. Right, and then these other pieces need to have that material. So I want this, once again, to have this material. And then this to have that material. Right, so now I got some kind of little chrome part here. All right. <clears throat> so then I'm going to take that chrome part. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to size this down. Something like that. Let's give this a different material. Uh, let's see. I got to remember. I think I used. Try to remember what I used for you guys. So you know what I used. I know I used uh, a plastic here. I used the soft plastic with a color so let me fill that so color fill object there you go and then now this cord part right i can there's multiple ways i can do this i could also just do this is pretty much kind of what i did position this wherever i want like this okay so if you're seeing what i have here and then repeating something that we've already done. Taking this, deleting, okay? And here, I'm gonna turn off the poly paint for this as well. And let's go back to this material. I'm gonna delete Flat Island, and I can do this, and then come up here, do this, and then now, all I need to do is tell ZBrush, okay? Let's make from this edge, let's go ahead again and bridge, arcs. Okay, and this I'm just gonna do optimal curve, optimal resolution, let ZBrush take care of it. Tap on that edge, come over here and tap on that edge, and then there you go. And the beauty of this, this is even if you wanna do a little fun with the cord, it's polygrouped. So I can go Q mesh, polygroup all, and I can maybe push in certain parts of this, right? in here if I want to. Something like that. So then this cord would have some kind of little pattern even on it if I wanted to. See? And so if we turn our paints back on, and there you go, and then we would want to reassign this, that. And so color, fill object. Okay, so you guys could go that route which is actually the way I went, or you guys could just grab the curved tube or curved tube snap, right? And then just draw out a tube. Here, I'll go bigger. Draw out a tube. That's it. And then you can even edit it and you can put it where you want. Okay, and if you don't want it to move off the surface, right? So if we go back and let's get rid of this. If I now want to put a tube like this, core like that right and then now smaller red brush size taps taps makes smaller and then I can in stroke palette under curves I can lock the start and lock the ends and now I see this where this is sitting in space I can actually move this to say somewhere around there and then now when I'm doing this you can see the start doesn't move as much see you have control of this curve to position it kind of how you might want it to be positioned. Oops. And right now, I also have start, bend, start. I'm going to do bend both. So that way I freely can really play with this chord. There you go. That's it. And there we have it, everybody. We recreated... My original headphones with a different little spin. This looks like a kid's size right now. Handy dandy headphones. Yeah, because uh, it's more bulky because I went bigger here. You can see how thin I went and I had a bigger archway here. Right, That was the difference. That made the big difference, right, is what I did in here. And in fact, I have this sitting on the wrong side too. These pieces need to be flipped. 
So again, I can go mirror if I turn on the floor. I put them on the wrong side when I was making, right? So I can go deformation, right? And I can mirror them over the Z, right? And flip it all over. But you guys can also just use the gizmo. So remember we were talking about the gizmo? If I hold the alt key and click on home, see where the gizmo went? It went to the home. And then I just reset it. And now if I just click this and hold the shift key and go 180 degrees, that's also flipping it for me. Make sense? So there's more than one way to possibly make something happen. All right, there you go. They're, they're, my, they're kids' headphones. They're for my daughter. <laughs> These are the adult ones. These are the kid ones. So it really, as you can see, that archway and the width of this really changes the look of the headphones. Like someone said, bulkier headphones. All right, oil change. Me too. I got the big ears. So as you guys can, I'm sure you saw over this stream, this is being recorded. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on our Twitch immediately. Okay. I'm sure you guys are seeing in the bottom corner. We announced the ZBrush Summit. Okay. That is going to be in October 23rd to the 26th. We are already looking for you guys to compete. Everybody. Guys, this is a great challenge like to compete inside for the Sculpt Off. So it's going to be the same way we did last year. It's completely open to everybody. You want to compete? Come compete. We will be streaming it. Okay? We'll be looking at people's pieces. As always, we always round up some amazing prizes. Okay? They're always really good stuff that you guys can win. But it's also a great way as an artist to expand yourself and you can get a challenge. So there's a link. I know it's been coming through, but I just want to put it in there again. Go sign up. Go for it. It's three hours out of your day on a Saturday to challenge yourself to see what can you create in three hours based upon the theme that we throw at you. It's, this, this is how I do some of this stuff. I, I sit there and I try and figure out what I can do. Okay? And in a short amount of time. And now, yeah, oh, that's true, Weston. If it was my daughters, they would definitely need to be hot pink. Good call. Good call. Finally getting that hot pink in here, huh? <laughs> All right. So please take take it take try it, man. And I'm you'd be probably surprised how fun it is, and it's a great challenge, just artist wise, to go about doing this. So okay. All right, well, that's it for me. It was This was three hours, a lot longer than we, we were planning on going. So I thank you all for joining me for this stream. Again, it'll be up. Okay. Oh, yes, you wanted to see my uh, Discord. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hold on, let me see. Hold on, thank you for reminding me. I would have totally forgot. So obviously, we've got a Pixelogic Discord. Are you a part of that? So let me give you guys that. Uh, here we go. Wrong keyboard. Uh, I'm trying to. So here's the Pixel Logic Discord. So you can be a part of that as well. Um, let's see, is it coming through? I don't see it in the chat coming through, even though it's. Oh, uh, it's only on my YouTube. I'm on YouTube right now. And I don't see it coming through. And then uh, my personal one that I communicate with people a lot and have some fun with is boom. Invite people. Copy that. Copy that, Roger. Um. Are you on, what are you on, are you on YouTube? If you go to YouTube real quick, you can get it. Uh, Cause I'm on a different, I'm on another computer. I can't get to it on the computer I'm streaming at right now. There you go. Thanks, thanks K. There's the Pixelogic one. And then I put my own one in there too, since you were asking. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any more time for questions. I have to get going, uh, painting a wool. You could use you could use uh, micro polys. There's already wool in in there, or use surface noise with an image. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to go through all that. 
<laughs> they can only play one audio file. Thanks, Dice K. All right, so again, thank you, everybody. I've been Paul Gabriel with a how to do make headphones just as a fun little project. It's a great, great way to just go at it. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day, wonderful evening.